It's 7 a.m. and Boo has been running around the house, going from window to window, because there's a black cat in the yard. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. So he's kind of in freak out mode right now. I don't know where the cat went because I saw it behind um, the table and chairs and then I went to get the camera and it came back and I don't know where it is. Here's Boo. Oh look, there's a tabby. A very skinny tabby. There's Bill. There's two cats in the window and there's a cat on the patio. Boo ran around to the back door to see what was going on, but I don't know where that cat went. It looked like it was hunting something, like it was crouching really low and moving really fast across the patio, but I don't know where it went. It's 7.26 p.m. and the cat is in the greenhouse. Look at that. All of a sudden, Boo went flying from his room to the kitchen and I said, what's going on? I don't see anything. And the cat's in the greenhouse. I hope it doesn't decide to make itself at home in there. There's nothing for it to eat in there at all. There's no cat food. Oh, but there's catnip in the greenhouse. But you know what? The catnip plants, they're like half dead or more than half dead because it's been so hot in that greenhouse and I haven't been watering them enough. Anyway, this looks like a small cat. It's either a teenager or it's just a small cat. It looks really thin too. It must be hunting something. If I go outside right now to put food out, it's gonna run away. And we have to remember that I do have neighbors that are feeding these cats. Okay, it looks like it's trying to go under the fence. It's 7.10 p.m. I'm in Boo's room. I just walked in and I put some topping on his food. There's two cats. There were two cats by the back door. Look at this. Look. They were talking to Splash. Every time there's cats in the yard, they come up to the back door and they talk to Splash. I wonder what he's been telling them. So there's a torty toward the back. I've never seen that cat before. And the other one is... Um, the tabby with the white paws, which I saw the other day. The other one was in the greenhouse the other day. So I guess these two are friends. Maybe they're brother and sister. Maybe these are two uh, from the family that I saw at the water bowl like a few weeks ago. There was a family of like five tabby cats uh, at the water bowl, but it was at night and it was night vision. So it could be that some of them are torties.
It's 7.15 p.m. This cat just came back. It's looking at the back door. It's looking for Splash. I'm super zoomed in, so I'm sorry if this is out of focus. The tabby cat went under the fence before. These look like young cats. I don't think they're... I was going to say I don't think they're a year old. They might be just around a year old, but... They definitely look young. So there's the tabby. It just crawled out from under the fence. Let's go in to the other side of the yard behind the garage. Here's another one. Another tabby. This is another one that looks really young. I don't think I've seen this one before. I think that whole family is coming around right now. Here's Boo by the back door. He looks like he's in attack mode. He's not looking too happy. Oh, look at this, look. Hello. There's the cat and there's Boo, look at this. That's a young cat. I would say this cat's probably like, I don't know, seven months old. It's like a teenager. It's very curious. Who's like, where are you going? I just put my shoes on because I was going to go outside. <coughs> Boo's not happy. Hello, baby. <coughs> hey, baby. It's a little cat. It's a young cat. <coughs> Boo, you're okay. You're okay. Hello. Hello, baby. Hello. There's the cat with the white paws. Here's Simba. Well, we got four cats happening right now. Look, I wonder if that's like a mama cat. That cat looks a little bit older. They see Simba. Look at this. Oh my god, look at this now. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this, look. Here's a tuxi. Oh my gosh, look at this cat. They're all freaked out. They all got big tails because Boo and Simba just got in a little fight. Oh my gosh, I told you guys, the whole family. Here's the torty. They're just looking at me. Are you going to come up to the back door? They're all looking at me. Wow, they're brave. These guys are brave. Boo's not happy. You okay? You're okay, guys? Look at this one. Come and look at Boo. You okay, Boo? You okay, Boo?
Look at these two under the patio chairs. So it seems that word might have gone out that I put some food out yesterday for that other cat. Maybe the other cat is the mom of these cats. The cat that was here yesterday. That cat might be the mom cat for these cats and she might have told them that I put some food out so I might, uh, I might go get some food. I just put some plates of food together and I came back out and they went under the fence in the back, so. They're in the back corner under the fence. So this is some dry food. And that's what's left over from Boo's dinner. And I'm just gonna leave these here and See if they come back. See the cat poking its head out from under the fence? That's the exact same location that Stella used to be in with the kittens. If you go watch videos from six years ago, like the first videos posted on this channel, that's where they were filmed near that corner of the fence. That's where the kittens used to be. So it seems all the cats really like that area back there. All right, so I'm gonna move away from the door and we'll see what happens. Here's Bowie's laying half under the kitchen table. I shut the window in his room and I shut the window in my bedroom because the cats like looking out of those windows, but there's only a screen there and right now I don't really trust Boo because he's looking kind of agitated by the back door. So the food's been outside for a while now and the cats have not come back, which is fine. And the way these cats are acting, they're definitely acting like local ferals. And the fact that I have seen them in the area before, several times, oh look, look at this. The black and white one came back. Is it gonna eat? This one's kind of an odd looking cat. I hope it's not sick. Maybe it's waiting for family members. These cats definitely appear to be siblings.
It must not be hungry because it's not eating. So I just moved into the kitchen to look out of the kitchen window and the cat was staring at me. And then it followed me back to the door. Well, it kind of, you know, it knew where to look. It didn't physically follow me, it just knew where to look. And uh, it saw me come back to the door. I just want to remind anyone watching this video that if you see a feral cat in your yard or a stray cat in your yard, don't rush up to it, don't go out to pet it, give it space and just observe its behavior because it will most likely be scared away and you don't want to do anything that's going to freak it out. If I was going to go outside right now, I would move very slowly and then I would just sit uh, probably by the back door here, I would I would sit quite a bit away from the cat just to see what the cat's going to do. And actually, maybe I'll do that right now. Okay. Did you see how fast that cat moved? Notice it was like crouched down low and it ran away really fast. Yeah, so that cat is really fearful and... These are, this is definitely a, a family of ferals. So there it is on the other side of the fence. That's where Ditto used to like to hang out. So I'm just gonna go inside, leave it alone. So one of the tabbies is by the back now. I think this is the, the little thin one. I hope the camera is focusing. I'm using the camera that has focusing problems. Yeah, I think this is the little one that was by the back door. It reminds me so much of when Simba was outside in the yard. Okay, I just switched to the older camera which should be able to focus better. And I'm gonna move away from the door because maybe it's afraid of me. We'll see if it comes and eats anything. It's 10.36 a.m. I'm just about to head out and I was checking on Boo before I left and he was looking out the window. I was like, what are you looking at? Well, the cats are back, three out of the four of them. I don't know who ate the food that was out there yesterday because it got dark. And then I got a flashlight and I looked and um, by around 9 p.m. the food was gone. So I don't know if the cats ate it or if raccoons or possums or skunks ate it or what, but the cats are paying a visit right now. I'm not putting any food out for them because I have to leave, but there's water. And see, this is what I really don't want. I don't want them relying on me for, for every meal. Like for breakfast and dinner every day. I was kind of hoping last night was a rare occurrence. I figured they moved on and they wouldn't be back for a while. But these cats are definitely siblings. I don't know if they've been Tionard or not. I can't get a really good look at their ears. I do know that the woman down the block is still trapping cats, so this one's enjoying playing with the the chair cushion. I mean, so that's a good sign at least that this cat knows how to play. I think when cats um, like have siblings, they learn how to play better like with regards to feral cats. 
because Ditto and Hydrox did not know how to play. They didn't know how to play at all. But Simba and Splash knew how to play, but of course I was teaching them how to play, so. So anyway, there's three of them. The, uh, the black and white one is not here right now. All right, I'm gonna go. I should probably shut Boo's window. I don't really trust him with the window open with me not here. Not that he's gonna bust through it, but. Here's Boo, I just shut his window. It's only open like an inch. It's 7.35 p.m. and I'm outside. I just shut the greenhouse for the night. It's starting to cool down already. And I don't see the cats anywhere. So that's fine. If they do come by, I do have food for them. Um, but I haven't seen them all day. It's 8 a.m. And I'm putting a platter of cat food out. This is some of the wholehearted beef pate. Um, the cats don't really like it. I had some extra cans. So I'm just curious to see what happens if I put this out here. I saw one of the members of the kitten family on the side of the house just a few minutes ago. I was watching the security camera. So we'll see if the cat comes out to eat it or if the cats are around or what the situation is. I'm just gonna leave it here. This is where I saw the cat. So the cat was drinking some water and then it went to the right into the bushes. Here's the cat food that I put out this morning. I also have a camera pointing at it. Nobody has been eating it. So that's a really good sign because it means those cats are not starving. If they were starving, they would have been here gladly eating the food this morning. So I just noticed that there's a lot of ants on this plate. So I want to throw it out. Uh, I'm going to just shake it off a little, get some of the ants off, and then I'm just going to put it in a, in a bag and toss it in the garbage. Um, the other thing that happened this morning is there was some construction going on next door. They're renovating the house. So that could have scared the cats off also, but either way it is a good sign that they were not here begging for food because it means they are getting food somewhere else. It's 10 p.m. and I was just in the other room and I heard a cat howling. The kind of howling a cat makes, like if you put them in the car to take them to a vet, like they're not happy about something, that kind of howling. But it was, it was as if it was in the distance, but I could not tell if it was in the house or outside of the house. So I just walked around the rooms up here and um, I saw Simba, it wasn't him, it wasn't Splash. Boo was here in the window looking out the window, so I was like, well, maybe Boo's hearing it outside, but then I was like, where's Stella? So I was looking for Stella, and I don't know if she was in the round tub in the kitchen or if she was downstairs. I don't know if it was her um, or if it was a cat outside. Based on Boo's body language right now, I would think maybe it's a cat outside because he does look a bit agitated. I'm going to go look downstairs anyway, just to see, I don't know, maybe Stella wasn't feeling good and she vomited, I don't know. Um, it's really not like her to howl like that. So I kind of think maybe it was coming from outside, in which case I'm going to have to look at the security camera footage. Stella, you feeling okay? There's Splash, there's Stella. So uh, right now it's about 10.20 p.m. and I just put some plates of food out. Um, I put a platter of crunchies and then I uh, picked up what was left over from the cat's dinner. So for dinner they had some canned fish with some of the steamed salmon on top. There's not much left on those plates. Um, and I'm looking now and someone just moved this. So I have a security camera pointed at the plates so I know what's going on and literally I was out here 10 minutes ago and um, I don't know who but somebody just moved out. I'm assuming it was like a raccoon or an animal or something. Um, so the reason why I put the food out here is because I looked at the security camera footage and I saw um, the, the teenage cats. They're you know kind of like older kittens, the ones that were near my back door, the family of four. Uh, kittens 
and I saw them out here on the security camera uh, about 20 minutes before I heard the cat howling noise. So I don't think it was them. Um, and they were on the side of the house, they were drinking water, and they were running through here. And, I mean, skin and bones. Um, one of the cats was literally skin and bones. You could see the bones on the, like, the back above the tail, just like jutting out. It was just, I don't like seeing that. It reminds me of Ditto, when Ditto was inside, and um, like the last month of his life, he started losing weight. And, uh, you know, he had those bones sticking out also, so. Um, yeah, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see cats going hungry. So that's why I put the food out. Now the issue is that I've put the food out several times for these cats and each time I put the food out for them, they don't eat it. Um, the other day I saw one of the cats in the yard. Um, I put the food out. They never came back to get the food. So I'm hoping they come back to get the food and to eat the food. Um, because so far I've tried like three or four times and I've put the food out and they don't come back and eat it. And of course the other issue is that if the cats are out here and I try to come outside while they're out here, they will run and leave the yard. So uh, these are definitely some feral cats. Um, on the security camera last night, I did see the other cat, um, the one that was not really as afraid of me, the one that kind of sat on the patio while I put food out for it. And I'm definitely hoping that cat is not pregnant because that cat's not thin and um, it's been walking around here and yeah I'm, I'm hoping it's not pregnant because I don't need that cat like deciding it's gonna have its kittens in my yard so let's hope that cat's just a really good hunter and uh, maybe someone else is feeding it and it's getting a, a more steady supply of food we also have to remember that with the kitten family since there's like four of them or maybe even five of them whatever they catch they're most likely going to split among themselves so like when stella and the kittens and boo when they were living outside if stella killed a bird for example they would all split it or if stella caught a mouse they would all split the prey like they would share it and they would all eat it so they could be another reason why they're thin because it's you know quite a few of them they're traveling in a pack they're hanging out together and you know, whatever food they find, they're splitting it, you know, four or five ways. So I can only do what I could do right now. So I put the food out. If they come back to eat it, great. I would rather have them eat it than a bunch of raccoons. So we'll see what happens. Maybe they don't even know what it is. Like, I hope that's not the case, you know, but it could be that they've only ever survived by hunting. And maybe they haven't been eating food that people are leaving out. I don't know. I'm hoping that they recognize what's on these plates as food. Uh, that's why I put some of the leftover wet food out as well as the dry food. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Here's Boo. He's waiting in the kitchen. It's 10.40 p.m. and I'm looking at the security camera. And this was just filmed a few minutes ago, so this is one of the little skinny kitties. Maybe that's what I'll call them, the skinny kitties. And um, it came back, it's eating the leftover fish on the plate. I don't know if this is the one that was really, really skinny. Okay, now it's going for the dry food. Very good. There's some reflections on the screen, but I think you can see it. So this is what's going on outside right now. There's three cats eating. I'm happy it's cats and not, you know, possums, skunks, or raccoons. See how these are young cats? They're all tabbies. And the black and white one, um, I saw it on the security camera footage a little bit earlier. So that one's around also. That would be the, the fourth one in this group. So they're eating the dry food, which is good, and they're eating the 
become the leftover wet food. And there is plenty of water outside. I did refill both of the really big water bowls today with fresh water. I'm thinking about putting a new live stream camera outside at night to catch things like this, but um, it would have to be a whole new setup and it would take quite a bit of work to do that, so I don't know if I'm going to have any time relatively soon. I think this one, the blotchy one, is the one that I saw with the um, the bones in the back sticking out. It's hard to tell with some of the security camera footage because when the lighting is really bad and then like the angle that the cat is like walking, like when one of these cats is walking away versus like right now we're getting a side angle. So when you see the cat from the side, it's easier to identify which cat is which. But when you just see them like from the back side, it's harder to tell. So here's the other camera, and you can see that the cat is now drinking water. This is the cat that was just eating some of the food on the patio. So it went over here, and it's drinking some of the water. It's a really big water bowl. I always put out very big water bowls outside, so that if like debris and stuff falls into the water bowl, the debris will fall onto the bottom of the water, and then I feel like it'll you know, keep fresh water on top versus a smaller water bowl. And then if you have debris in a small water bowl, you know, it's just a small bowl of debris at that point. When I say debris, I mean like leaves and dirt and, you know, just stuff that might fall into it. It's really, really important to make sure that the wildlife has fresh water, especially when you know it's really hot today it was like 90 degrees always make sure you at least put water out for the animals and these two are still eating that's good i'm happy the food went to the i was going to say the people that i want it to go to so um, the animals that I wanted it to go to, the cats that I wanted it to go to. I think it would be really cool to find these cats a good home, but I don't know if I would want to separate them. And right now we see the three of them together, but there's usually the fourth one with them. 
sometimes even a fifth, and I don't know of many people that are going to take four cats at once. Maybe if they're split up two and two. Boo's jumping around the room. He's looking out the window right now. He's not too happy he sees a cat. All right, so these three had a nice meal. This is a uh, wireless camera. I don't want to watch too much because it'll drain the battery. It's 11 p.m. I just put some more dry food on the platter, so if the cats want to come back and eat more, they can. And I just looked out the window and do you see what I see? Boo's kind of bumping into me. It's the cat. There's a cat underneath the table. See it? It's one of the kittens. It's one of the, the teenagers. The kitty cats. See them? Look how cute. I wonder if it's waiting for dinner. I will be very surprised if the cats come by around dinner time today looking for dinner because, I mean, I put the food out around midnight yesterday and if they come today around dinner time, that's just crazy. It goes to show you how smart cats are. Cats are so smart. But I'm hoping that they're kind of like, you know, doing their own thing and they're not going to expect two meals a day. And here's Boo. Boo's doing his job. Boo's looking at that cat. He's saying, what's going on out there? So one thing I haven't done yet today is go outside and refill the water bowls. I was supposed to go out earlier and water all the plants, but I just kept putting it off. So hopefully within the next half hour, I'll be going outside and the cat's probably going to get scared away. Here's the cat, and I will be very surprised if this cat does not run the minute I open the back door. It's 6.25 p.m. Look at this. This is the black and white cat. I just looked outside, it was playing in the yard. I kind of feel like I'm being stalked. Like there's a whole bunch of cats on the periphery just stalking my activity. It's about 9.45 p.m. I just put a platter of food out, so I opened one of the cans of sardines that the cats don't like. I think it's like the Avengers sardines for cats. Um, I also put a bunch of crunchies on the platter, and then um, there's some leftover food from Boo's dinner, so I put that down. I just saw um, like the black and white cat and then the, the tabby with the white paws. Uh, they've been walking around out here. Uh, earlier, there was a whole bunch of raccoons. So I was waiting for the, for the raccoons to leave before putting any food out. So let's hope the cats come back and eat this before the raccoons get to it. It's about 10.30 p.m. And one of the cats is eating the food. This is one of the, the kittens. I have to come up with a good name for this group of kittens. The kitten siblings, I know they're all probably from the same litter. They all seem to be the same age. This is the really skinny one. It has really pretty markings. I have to check uh, the footage and see if anyone else ate anything. It's 8.45 a.m. I'm getting a bit of a late start today and I just looked out the window and saw this. So there's one of the kittens drinking water. The water's been sitting there for a little while. 
Um, I was away for an overnight trip. I got back last night. There's another kitten behind this chair. Um, one of the Tordy kittens. And um, probably last night, maybe around 10 or 11 p.m., I did put that platter of food out. It was some canned food and some dry food. And none of the cats ate it. I looked at the security cameras and none of them ate the food. Um, they didn't come back. Uh, there was a bunch of raccoons, possums, like everything else was in the yard. Um, so the wildlife got it other than the cats. It's about 12.30 p.m. right now. And this is some of Boo's leftover breakfast that I put some crunchies on top of. And I put it out here just to see if um, the cats came back to eat it. They have not come back to eat this. So to me, that's a good sign. I think I mentioned previously that that indicates they're most likely being fed somewhere else or they have a good supply of food somewhere else. Maybe uh, they're really skilled hunting, but I think chances are that they're being fed somewhere else also. So um, he'll just be here on the patio. Um, there is a camera pointed at it so if anything comes to eat it I'll, I'll be able to see uh, who who it is it's 7 45 p.m. and boo has been looking out the back door and the way he was looking out the door um, I was like there has to be a cat outside so it's a member of the kitten gang you know one of those kittens um, the really small one so I am putting a plate of food out. So that's a can of the Trader Joe's turkey and giblets, which uh, is now discontinued, and also some crunchies. So hopefully it will come back and eat this. So it was just sitting here on the side of the house, and then when it saw me, it ran. It ran through the fence. So hopefully it'll come back. Maybe it'll smell the food. It's about 8 p.m. right now. I just walked into the kitchen, and the way Boo was looking out the back door, I knew there had to be a cat on the patio. So I opened up the security camera and this is what we're looking at. So the little cat came back and it's eating the food that I put on the platter. I think this is the little cat. I could be wrong. This could be one of the siblings, um, but at least it's a cat eating and not a possum because a possum uh, was eating the food. So hopefully there's quite a bit of food left for the cat. Um, after it's done, I'll probably go out and see if I need to put some more out, but it definitely looks very hungry from the way it's eating. Also, if I go out there, the cat will run away like it did earlier. These cats are really, really fearful, really, really skittish, and... You know, that's why I'm just going to keep my distance, let it eat the food, and after it's done, I'll see about going out and putting more food out. But if I go out now, it's going to run away. So it is, it's 8.20 p.m. and there's drama going on outside. So the, uh, the little cat, I don't know if you could see this or not. So I think that's the little cat that's been eating. I have a flashlight. I'm pointing at it. I think that's the little cat that's been eating. And there was another cat underneath the patio table. There still is another cat. So here you go. So the other tabby. This is the tabby that was talking to Splash by the back door. I am really hoping this is not a pregnant mother tabby. I'm not sure if this is a boy or a girl. Um... Maybe I'll put another plate of food out on the other side of the patio. I don't want any fights. So this is obviously not one of the siblings. There's a little, a little baby. Look at this. There's the other sibling. Is the whole, is the whole cat gang going to show up? Okay, are they related? Is that the mother? Is that the mother or the father? I don't want any fights. Okay, it does not look that way. It doesn't look like they're related because you can see that they're backing out. So I think I'm going to go outside and they're, they're probably all going to be scared away if I do that. This one might not be scared away because this one might be the one that was kind of um, more friendly. Here's Stella. Stella wants to know what's going on. 
Okay. I just came outside and all the cats scattered. At least it looks like they scattered and yeah, the um the platter's completely empty, so I'm going to go get some more food. I just put another platter of food over here on the patio and I put a smaller plate of food over here on the other side. I don't know if anyone's going to come back. They might have been scared away, but they might come back. And there we have it. That cat just came back. Now this cat does not look like it's starving by any means. Um, this cat has a pretty good figure. I am just seriously hoping it's not a pregnant cat. So the little cat came back also and is eating the food on the second platter. The bigger cat is still eating off the smaller plate. So here's the bigger cat. It's starting to walk around. I don't know if it ate all the food. Now it's looking at me. You want more food? If I go put more food out, it's going to run away. Hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. I just, I don't want it to um, disturb the other cat. Hopefully they won't get in a fight. This is a big cat. This is not a skinny cat. Okay, I just came back outside and it ran in this direction. The other cat ran in the other direction and here's the plate. I just put a bunch of dry food on the plate and I put more dry food on this plate. So the big cat seems to be very smart and less afraid. There it is. Can you see it? I really hope this cat is not pregnant. So I don't know where this cat goes during the day. I only see it occasionally at night or like when the sun's going down. And it looks like maybe it's fussy, maybe it doesn't want dry food, maybe it only wants wet food. And there's the little cat that came back to eat more food. I'm surprised at how much it's eating. It's really eating a lot. It's almost 9 p.m. and I'm checking the security camera footage. It looks like the black and white cat came and ate some food. It looks like both of these platters are empty right now. Here's Bowie's doing his job. He's looking outside. There's a little black cat. Hello, kitty. I'm bringing some more dry food out. I just put more dry food on the platter. The big cat just came back. It's 8.20 p.m. and look at what's going on outside. Two of the kitties are eating from a platter I put out. This is some dry food and some wet food. So this is the, it looks like the little tabby. Look at this, three. So there's the torty. The little, look at this, four. So there's the one that looks like he has like white boots on. I don't know if his name is Nickers or Tommy. I haven't figured out what his name is yet. Um, and then this one is the small one. And then this is one of the torties and I'm not sure if that one is another torty or it looks like a tabby. Maybe it's the blotchy tabby. So there's two torties, 
Oh look, here's another one. Is that the black and white one? Yeah, that's the black and white one. One, two, well, one, two, three, four, five total if you count the other one. So there's a small plate of food on the other side of the patio. So we're dealing with six cats because there's two torties. The other torty is not here. There's uh, the the small tabby, and then here's the blotchy tabby, which is like a classic tabby. There's the black and white cat, and then there's the tabby that has like the white paws. So that's six. I thought it was four or five. It's six. And that's not including the big tabby uh, that was here yesterday, the one that I'm hoping is not pregnant. So if I open the back door and if I go outside right now, they're all going to run, they're all going to scatter, so I'm not going to do that. But if they finish, it looks like they're almost done with what's on that platter. And then I'll go out and I'll put more food on the platter. So it looks like some of them are eating off the smaller plate by the tub of water. Boo just jumped up by the window. Yeah, they're all kind of, they're scouring the patio. Boo just rubbed up against me. You okay, Boo? I don't know what you guys can see because I know there's reflections on the glass and it's pretty dark out. So I just refilled all the water bowls a few hours ago. I got eaten alive by mosquitoes. I've never been bitten by so many mosquitoes at once. So um, it looks like that one cat either saw me or heard me. I have to go move my car. All right, there's four cats to the left, which you probably can't see because I can't focus through the screen. And there's two cat, and there's two cats over here. So there's six cats on the patio right now. So that would be the whole family. That would be the white paws, the black and white cat, the little tabby, the classic tabby, and then the two torties. So my concern with these cats is, um, I don't know if they've been TNR'd or not. And I don't need these guys um, multiplying exponentially, basically. So, um, what makes it difficult is that they only come around at night. They don't come around during the day. I can't really put a trap out at night because then Chances are very good I'd be trapping skunks, possums, and raccoons also. But they all look like young cats. They look like they're not even a year old. I just came outside and I put out some more dry food and I put out some more canned food. I finished off the can that Boo's been eating and maybe 20 feet away from me is, I think, the small little one. I don't know if the camera's picking anything up right now, but he's or she is in the grass just sitting there. I think it's tiny, the little, little one. It's just sitting in the grass. I don't think the camera... I have the exposure cranked on the camera. And um, I don't see anything on the screen, so... 
we'll see what happens when I try to edit it. But yeah, right now, mm, maybe 12 feet away from me. I just came inside and there's the black and white one. And here comes a possum. There's a possum. And there's the little cat eating. Look at this. Here's another cat. Here's one of the other ones. There's the the classic tabby, the blotchy one. I hope there's not going to be a fight between a possum and a cat. These are really small cats. Either they're small cats or they're not fully grown yet. So Marty at Grandma and Grandpa's house is a small cat. She's fully grown. She's probably, um, probably like five years old. Um, and she's fully grown, but she's like half the size of the cats in this house. She's just a small petite cat. So I don't know if these are small petite cats or not fully grown yet. So here they are eating on the on the platter. This is the one, the one on the left is the one that was hanging out in the grass, and then this is the one that walked across the patio. What I've just realized is, so I'm here with these four cats right now. There's potentially six cats out on the patio. So right now there are 10 cats on my property. Six outside, four inside, 10. Now that's not counting the uh, big tabby that was seen like yesterday. Uh, also when I checked the security camera footage uh, overnight there's been a what looks like an all white cat that's been visiting and there's also another all black cat that's been visiting. So we're talking a total of 13 cats uh, in and out of this property um, over the course of like 24 hours. It's a lot of cats. So, um, yeah. Simba says, just give us crunchies. It's 8.40 and I just came back outside. I have a whole cup of crunchies. I just put some more crunchies on this plate. Also, all the cats scattered when I came outside. Look at this. This plate is completely empty also, the platter. I just loaded it up. I'll move that over. That's all I'm putting out uh, tonight as far as cat food. That should be plenty for them. I just came back inside because I started getting bitten up by bugs again. So there's one of the cats, there's two of the cats. So they get scared off, but it seems like they're not going far. Because obviously they're really hungry. That's plenty of food for them. Between this plate and the other plate. Is it gonna go to the platter? Yeah. All right. Oh, look at this now, there's two over here. Okay, so they have plenty of water, they have a good amount of food, and I have to go move my car. I might run to the supermarket, and I need to go do other things. Like, I really, I really don't have the time in my schedule to be spending so much time dealing with cats on the patio again. I just feel bad for these little babies. It's about 4 a.m. right now and there's one of the little cats. I don't know where it was hanging out. 
um, somewhere by the back steps. So I woke up about a half hour ago. Like, I don't know, I just woke up and haven't been able to get back to sleep. So I said, let me check the security camera footage. And it ends up that these six cats have been hanging out in the yard. Um, they were hanging out on the patio chairs, on the patio table, um, walking around the patio. So I decided to look out the window to see if they were still on the table. I don't see any on the table. Um, they might be on the two farthest chairs. I don't know. I was going to grab a flashlight and look. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. It's 9.11 a.m. I'm sitting here getting work done on my computer and Boo's been looking out the window. Look what's going on outside. See that? It's one of the babies. It's drinking some water. So this morning I realized that I have a whole bunch of kitten food, like um, canned kitten food, that I had purchased for Ditto because it's higher calorie than regular cat food and it has more nutrition in it. So when he was sick, I was trying to get as many calories in him as I could. So that's why I would sometimes give him the kitten baby food. And I'm thinking... Maybe I'll just put it out for the cats, but um, it's walking away, which is good. I haven't seen any of the other ones on the patio this morning. Here's Splash. And what I would like to do over the course of the next several days, well, we're coming into a long weekend right now, but um, uh, maybe after that, um, I need to start looking into and maybe figuring out some kind of um, trapping plan. Right now I have the one trap that I used for Ditto and I tried to use on Hydrox. Maybe if I put it out in the morning um, when there's usually not all six of them here at the same time, maybe I would be able to um, like do one at a time. I don't know. I'm just taking it one day at a time right now. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I also don't want like 12 kittens. Yeah, so um, it is in my mind. I am thinking about things. So again, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I have a million other things. So dealing with cats is not my day job. I have other responsibilities. I have a lot of other responsibilities. It's really just a uh, part-time volunteer gig at this point. It's about 6.30 p.m. right now, and I'm going to put this toy outside to see if uh, the cats want to play with it. Uh, the inside cats don't really play with it that much. They play with their other toys more more often. And so this one has, there's three levels and each level has a ball. The kittens look like they're capable of playing. Um, Hydrox did not know how to play. Ditto did not know how to play. But I'm thinking since there is like a family of six that, you know, maybe they will understand the concept of play. They might not know what toys are because you know, feral cats don't really know what toys are, so um, we'll see what happens. But what I did notice earlier was that this uh, little rubber ducky was in the middle of the patio, so that made me think, well, maybe the cats um, were playing with it. I don't know. It could have been some raccoons moved it or whatever. So um, that's why I said, let me put the toy out. Let me see what happens. So I do have a camera pointed at this, so hopefully if anyone comes to play with this, the camera will pick it up. Um, it probably smells like the inside cat since this was sitting in the living room for a while. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe the cats will be afraid of it. Maybe they won't be. We'll see what happens. The other reason why I selected this toy is because it is not electronic and it's made out of plastic and the balls are like plastic balls also so it is weather resistant it's okay to be outside. I'm putting two paper platters of food outside so what I have here is some dry cat food in the middle and then I opened a 5.5 ounce can of turkey pate for kittens so that's um, like half a can on this side half a can on that side all totaled one can and I have the same thing here. 
And Boo has been looking out of his window and he alerted me to the fact that he saw the cats out there because he acts a certain way when he sees them, right? I just put the two plates down and I moved the toy over. There's the camera pointing at them. So we'll see if anyone comes to eat. I am hoping that raccoons and possums don't come. Uh, the cats have been around, or at least a few of them, um, within the past 10 minutes. So we'll see if they come back. So right away, the big cat just showed up, the big tabby. So I think this one was hanging out um, behind the fence in the back. Because that seems to be where it came from. I don't know if it sees something on the other side of the patio or what. It seems to be kind of on alert. Is it gonna eat? It's not gonna eat. It's a big cat. It's drinking some water right now. I just put fresh water out there around 5 p.m. I think it sees me. Maybe it's looking for the separate little plate on the side there. Or maybe it just wants water. It's 8.09 p.m. and I just put the security camera on so I could see what's going on and there's two cats eating. Um, one from each platter. So this is one of the kittens uh, on this platter and I don't know who's on the other platter. I don't know if it's the big cat or one of the kittens, but I'm happy that the cats got to the platters before the rest of the wildlife. And with regards to the cats, I'm hoping that there's are safety in numbers since there's like a clan of six and they hang out together. I'm hoping that um, is beneficial for them the same way that Stella, Boo, and the kittens hung out together outside and um, there was safety numbers there. I'm hoping there's safety numbers with the other cats and that'll help um, keep like the raccoons and stuff away from them. Not that there's issues with raccoons, but we have seen some crazy raccoons. And it does look, and it does look like the cat that's eating on the other platter is the the big cat. So it's about. 817 right now and it looks like another cat or two showed up. It could be another one or two of the kittens. There's definitely four cats eating right now. It looks like the two torties showed up and one's eating on the plate in front and one's eating on the plate in back. So the fact, so if, if this is the fat tabby and uh, if the tortie's eating on the same plate as that cat, that would make me think that they are somehow related. Or that they at least know each other. It's about 8.25 p.m. and I just put the security camera back on and it looks like um, the, uh, the cat with the, uh, white boots, the white paws, um, is now eating off the back platter. And then I saw there's, like, a cat over here near the table. This platter looks completely empty. That platter might be close to empty. So, um, might give him another few minutes and then go out there with some more food. So that was two cans of food and probably more than a cup of dry food. But we've seen at least five cats eat off of it. It's about 8.30 p.m. and look at this. I think this is the big tabby. Or this might be the little one, this might be um, one of the babies. This might be the baby with the white paws, but look, 
Do you see the statue right next to it? That's Hydrox and Ditto. That's their statue. I had the statue in the cat shelter, but I took the statue out of the cat shelter, I don't know, like a week or two ago, um, when I first start when I first started seeing the cats coming around. Because I thought maybe they would want to go in there if it's raining. Okay, the cat I'm filming right now is a TNR'd cat. So if this cat is the fat cat, this cat has been TNR'd. I don't know if this is the fat cat or if this is the skinny kitty with the white paws. There's so many cats and they only come around at night and it's hard to tell. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put some more food out. So while I'm showing you this cat, the black and white cat, the skinny tuxedo cat showed up. And that cat's probably looking for food too, so um, I'm going to go put some food out. Okay, so this is what's going on with the platters. So here's, here's the cat with the white paws at the platter right now with the black cat. So I'm thinking the one that we just saw on the patio is the fat one. Because I think that's the young one eating. Again, it's hard to tell, but yeah, that does look like maybe it is the younger one. And there's the black and white one. Poor thing has no food. Because they ate it all. I don't know if you can see this, but there's some cats under the patio table. There's like two cats under the patio table. So here's what's going on. I opened another can of the turkey pate for kittens and I put it in this paper cup and I mixed in a whole bunch of water because, you know, it's been really hot today and it'll be easier to pour out of the cup and the cats like it. It's good for them to get the water. And then here's the can and I have a bunch of dry food in this. So I'm going to take both of these outside and dump them on the platters and that'll be it. So I just came outside and I put food on the platters and do you see this? It looks like there's two cats in the corner. Maybe it's the big one along with the black and white one. It's hard to tell because it's really dark and I have the exposure cranked. So these are the platters with the food and hopefully uh, the cats will come back and eat it. So I've been inside for less than a minute and one of the cats is eating off of the platter. So there's the skinny one with the white paws. I don't know if the black and white one is eating. It's hard to tell. I hope there's not a third cat with white paws. Okay, so it's actually um, like one of the tabbies in the back and then this looks like the um, the small tabby in the front. I think this is one of the ones with the uh, the white paws. It's really confusing. So here I am thinking I'm dealing with six cats. So there's the skinny one, the skinny tabby with the white paws. There's the tiny tabby. There is the two torties. There is the blotchy tabby. And then there's the um, tuxedo. So that's six. Then there's the big tabby. So that's seven. There's one of the torties. Chances are maybe there's even more than that. But I'm confusing them. I don't even know. I mean, when, when Ditto first started coming around, I thought Ditto was Hydrox because it was confusing. So there's the black and white one. There's the black and white one. Boo's been pretty calm tonight. He just jumped off the shelf by the window. The cats really want their crunchies, but um, I've been doing some computer work. I wanted to get a lot of uh, work done today, so that way I don't have to deal with my computer over the weekend, but I had some um, unexpected things. I had to do this uh, this afternoon for my day job. So. Yeah, so like right now there's four cats eating. And I don't I don't see I don't see clipped ears on these guys. 
I mean, maybe this one. I don't know. It's hard to tell because it's dark. Look at this four on a platter. And there's the fifth one in the back on the other platter. That's what it looks like. It could be that this is the only meal they're eating today. Like, I don't know where they were all day. I didn't see them in the morning. I don't know where they go. I don't know where they hang out. Usually feral cats will uh, sleep during the day that's when they'll get their rest and I know from looking at the security camera footage that these cats are pretty much prowling around all night so this could be their big meal they could be on a one big meal a day schedule and that's fine for cats like I've talked to uh, our vet about that and he says, like, that's the minimum you'd want to feed cats. But for a while, when Ditto was inside, when he was sick, we're dealing with his mouth cancer. For a while, he was on one meal a day. Um, and he got all of his calories during that one meal, and uh, that was fine for him. Look at this. There's another one back there. So this is all, this is six right now. I don't know if that was the big one just passing through. This is what I'm saying. It could be it could be more than six or seven. It could be more than that. I don't even know. It's nine ten PM. I just walked over to the back door and when I looked out, two cats ran out from the door. See, look. Do you see this? This is one of the torties. And there's Boo. Look at this brave, this brave cat. It almost has a nose like Splash. It has a big, it has a big black stripe down the middle of its face. It wants some more food. I'm going to put some more food out for it. I'll give it some dry food. It's looking at Boo. Wow, Boo is so big compared to that cat. Who's easily twice the size of that cat, if not three times the size of that cat. That's a really small cat. I'll give you some food, okay? See the cat? Can you see it? It's really brave right now. It must be really hungry. I just poured out a big bowl of dried cat food which I'm going to take outside, and there's the cat. It was right by the door, and now it's looking at me. Oh, look at this. So here's the big tabby, and I can't tell if this one has the, the clipped ear or not. So I just filled up both platters with some dry food, and I left a little bit of dry food in this bowl, which I will leave over here. So the big one's back, that's the one on the right, and it was walking over to the bowl of food, but then the tortie came over and decided that it's going to eat it, and then that looks like another tortie, and Boo's rubbing up against me. I think Boo's really happy that I'm feeding the cats, because I've noticed that he's acting different now. He's not as like frantic as he used to be. So it used to be whenever Boo saw like one of these cats in the yard or a cat in the yard, he would just frantically start running from window to window. He'd run from this window to the back door, downstairs to the window down there. And he would just be like running from window to window. But he's not doing that. Like he's not doing that at all. He's just hanging out in the other room kind of waiting for crunchies. So I think Boo's happy or happier. But I wanted to see if I could get a, a closer view of the big cat 
um, which is why I was hoping it was going to go eat some food because when I saw it uh, walking on the patio, um, I went to get the camera. I didn't expect it to be back so quickly. There was just a very big possum on the patio, so the window's open a few inches, and I'm sitting here trying to finish this work on my computer, and all of a sudden I heard like the sound of an unhappy cat, like um, not a full howl, but you know when like a cat might be giving a warning to another cat. So uh, I said, oh no, I looked outside and there was a big fat possum walking on the patio. And then like two of the cats um, were like approaching the possum. So then I, uh, I yelled out the window. I was like, hey, hey, um, just because I didn't want a fight. But I think it just goes to show us that um, with the cats, because there is more than one cat, if there is an issue, that they will kind of gang up on whatever the issue is. So what happened was I went to look for my flashlight and then I, I shone the flashlight outside the kitchen window to where the other platters are and the possum was eating on one of the platters. So then I went to get the camera and by the time I got back with the camera, one of the cats was eating on one of the platters. So I don't know if the cats chased the possum away or what. I'm actually going to have to look at the security camera and see if it's on the security camera. But I was definitely surprised that when I was yelling out the window at like the cats and the possum, the cats did not get scared and run away because a few days ago, if I did that, they would have gotten scared and ran away. So, cats are smart. So here's what happened with the possum. So here's the possum, it was eating off the plate and that light is, um, my flashlight, so I was shining my flashlight outside to see what was going on, and look at this, here's the cat. One of the cats just goes right up to the plate, and the possum moves away. The cat was like, okay, I'm gonna eat off this plate, and then the possum just walked off. These cats are fearless when it comes to like the other animals. And then, I don't know if you could see it, but there's like two or three cats under the table over there watching. It is 8.10 a.m. I just looked out the window and saw this. So there's one of the kittens. And I have to tell you how mad I am. I'm so mad right now. I just checked the security camera footage from overnight. It looks like there was a coyote on the patio. Um, the coyote came up the side of the house and then it came over here. It sniffed this plate and it sniffed around here and then it left. Um, it appears to be a coyote. It looks young. It looks really thin. It look like very hungry. It's the first time I've seen a coyote in this entire town. Um, the closest I ever saw a coyote was like five or six miles away. Um, in like a few towns over and that was many years ago so I don't need this I mean just yesterday I was thinking oh that it's so nice that the cats are safe outside again because I feel like over the past few years the cats really have not been safe outside and then lately I was like oh yeah the cats are are safer outside again but nope now there's a coyote roaming around so I really truly hope it was just passing through and it went far away last night and it's not going to come back but now I'm going to have to check the security cameras like every night to see what's going on. Here's Boo. He's very tired because he was up all night doing his job looking out the windows. Here's Simba. How you doing Simba? Are you okay? It's 10.15 a.m. I was just outside surveilling the gate on the side of the uh on the side of the house trying to figure out how a coyote could get in and when I came back onto the patio this cat was on the patio and then it kind of ran toward the back fence and then I just came inside and it came back so this is the little one I believe so like the other night when I was putting food on the platter and I said the cat was sitting in the grass like 12 feet away from me, this would have been the cat. 
The inside cats just had their breakfast and so I'm putting out a platter of dry food just to see if that cat will come back. There it is, it's under the fence, it's watching me. So if I go inside, it's probably gonna come out and eat some food. So my goal is to not feed these cats at night because of the coyote that I saw last night. I don't wanna keep any food out overnight that could potentially attract predators. So I'm hoping it's just a freak occurrence and it's not gonna happen again. But because of that, I am gonna take more precautions. And one of the things that I would like to do is not feed the cats at night. So um, if I could train them just to come around in the morning for food, that would be better. Um, so we'll see what happens. Another thing I found out is that coyotes are attracted to bird feeders. Um, they'll actually eat like the, the nuts and the seeds and what's left over. So I have to make sure that if I do feed the birds, there's no seeds or anything left at night that would attract coyotes. Another issue is that coyotes are not necessarily only nocturnal. They can come around during the daytime also. So yeah, I'm hoping it was just a traveler passing through and we're not gonna see it again and we're not gonna see any of its relatives or friends again. That's the situation right now. Here's Stella, she's by the back door. But I do feel violated. This is the first time that I actually feel violated in my own yard. It's really weird. I never felt this way with any of the other animals that have come to visit, even when we had like the crazy raccoons. It's 10.50 a.m. Here's Stella by the back door. And I was doing some work on my computer and all of a sudden I heard like a piece of metal clang. And it sounded like it was coming from outside. So I looked out the window and it was the little cat and the little cat hit this metal garbage can because it seems that the little cat ate most of the food off of the platter. So it's about 3.30 p.m. right now and I'm out here by uh, this fence and this is what I was looking at before trying to figure out how this animal um, could have come in. I've been sharing some photos of it with some neighbors and uh, half of them seem to think it was a fox um, because they've said that they've seen foxes around here so I am definitely hoping it was a fox because it means the cats are safer around foxes. Foxes are not known to go after cats or uh, pets uh, nearly as much as coyotes are. And I'm not saying that foxes never attack cats. What I'm saying is that uh, the percentages are way way less than coyotes. So um, yeah, I mean, it would have to be really, really thin to make its way through one of these bars. And the only other thing I can think of is maybe it came around this way. I honestly don't know where the fat raccoons come in from because the fat raccoons come in through here and there's no way that they're fitting through here. There's no way they're going under here. So they must be like squeezing themselves around here. That's the only thing that I can think. I don't think they're they're hopping this fence. There's like um, a chain link fence over here and it's only about, I don't know, four feet tall. There's a fly here. What I was thinking of doing is getting some wire and just like wiring this area kind of shut. But now I'm thinking about the bigger tabby and is the bigger tabby, uh, like is that how the big tabby comes in and out? So I don't know. And this is where I have a water bowl for the wildlife. So. I think right now I'm just going to treat it as if it was like a freak occurrence because it honestly was for as long as I've had these cameras up, which is like five years now. I've never seen a fox or a coyote in my yard and the more I look at the video, uh, the more I think it could be a fox just because it has a really long tail and su supposedly coyotes have shorter tails. and. I came out here with a tape measure and it does seem to be not as tall as a coyote would be. So in one of the videos it is standing near these chairs and I measured the uh, the chair height and it's only about like 18 inches and it appears to be not as tall as the like the seats of the chairs. So that's making me think um, it could be a fox. Also the length of the tail makes me think it could be a fox. I definitely feel better thinking that it was probably a fox. It's 7.15 and there's the little tabby. So I just went outside to shut off the light in the garage. I must have left it on. And he was walking around the yard. And when he saw me, he like stopped and then he went back to the fence. 
But once I came inside, then he came back. So he's looking for food. So there was just a tabby by the back door and it went running across the patio in that direction um, when it saw me. And the little, the little tabby went to the back. So what I have here is I have a platter of food and I have a can of Friskies poultry platter. I went to the store today and I stocked up on some cans of Friskies. That's what I started feeding Stella Boo, Splash and Simba when I first started feeding them outside. And then I upgraded their food as we went along. So that's why I got them some Friskies today. And I'm just gonna see if they'll eat it. And then I have some dry food in the middle. So that is one 5.5 ounce can, and I should say that I am actually shocked at the price of a can of Friskies these days. So I remember buying a can for 45 cents, and today, the store that I bought this at, it was 76 cents, and then when I went to the supermarket later, I said, let me see how much it's being sold for here. It was 80 cents at the supermarket. So I just came inside, and there's a platter of food, and the behavior that these cats are exhibiting is normal feral cat behavior. This is what all the other cats did at first. You know, when I would go outside, they would run out of the yard. You know, Hydrox used to do that. Ditto used to do that. Even Stella and Boo way back when used to do that. And then I would put some food out and then they would come back. And who do we have here by the back fence? Look, it's the black and white cat. I don't really have set names for any of these cats yet. I kind of think, oh look at this, look, the two of them. That reminds me of Splash and Simba so much. That's exactly where Splash and Simba used to be all the time. Oh, this is one of the torties. I wonder if the cats hang out in my neighbor's yard all day. Oh, there's a third one. Is that tiny? The little one? The littlest one of the bunch? Here, they're gonna, they're gonna come out and check out the platter. I only put one platter out because I only saw like the two cats, but if they all come out, maybe I'll just get another platter and just put both of them out right now. Look at that. I'll let them eat what's on there and then and then I'll put another one out. I have not even eaten dinner myself yet. I was gonna go maybe get some takeout today. I haven't had takeout in forever. They look really hungry. I don't know if they've eaten all day. Well, I know the little one has because the little one ate crunchies that I put out this morning but I don't know if the other one ate. And this one by the fence is just staring at me, so I'm gonna move away from the door. So they're really enjoying the wet food, the canned food that I put out. And I estimated that if there's, let's say six or seven cats that are coming for a meal, um, I estimated about four cans of food. That's a little more than half of a can each. And, you know, if that's their only meal for the day, um, that along with some crunchies should give them a good amount of calories. Plus they are outside cats, so they do burn off more calories than an inside cat would. I think I'm going to put another platter out. It's 7.30 and I'm bringing out another platter of food. So this is another can of Frisky's poultry platter. I do mix in some water. Uh, so I make it a little bit more um, like soupier for the cats. And then there's like three handfuls of dry food in the middle. And this is what the cats did to the platter. They pretty much ate everything. There's just a little bit of dry food left. And when they saw me, they ran under the fence. And there's, there's a little one now. So I'm going to go back inside and 
ideally what I would like to do is just, you know, get them all fed before it gets dark and then remove the platters, remove any trace of food. I just came back inside and someone came back to eat. I don't know if this is the little one or one of the torties. It might be the little one. Maybe he or she is the little one because they haven't been getting enough food. It's 7.51. Here's Splash and look at this. Look. The black and white cat is by the back door. Oh my gosh, it reminds me so much of Ditto right now. Here's Boo. Hello. Hello, little kitty. Hello, little kitty. And there's a big possum. Look at the possum. Wow, did you see it walk past? Look at this. Oh my gosh. Three babies. And there's a fourth one eating. I'm going to put another platter of food together. I just ordered some takeout, so before it arrives. There's Splash. He just charged the back door. It looked like he was trying to chase someone away. And there's Boo. So I just came out with uh, another can of Friskies in this white cup. Um, I just mix it up with some water in the white cup. I'm going to pour it on the platters. And then in the can, I filled it up with some dry food. I'm going to pour that on the platters also. Instead of uh, wasting another paper platter, I'll just use what's out already. So here are the two platters and I feel like the cats are starting to get a little bit more brave because they're just watching me from the periphery. And this tortie here is actually on the patio with me. Boo wants to know where his is and how come he's not getting any. Okay, I don't know what you could see because it's really dark, but there's three cats eating off of the one platter. Okay, now someone's going to the other platter. And there's a fourth cat walking around. So right now there's four cats. I don't know where the other ones are. The one with the, uh, the one with the white boots. And then the, uh, the blotchy tabby. It's 8.15 p.m. Both of these platters are completely empty, so I'm gonna put out one more can of wet food that I've um, you know, mixed in with some water and uh, some more dry food and then that's it. I'll give them, I don't know, another half hour to eat it and then I'm gonna pick up the platters. And there they are. I moved them over so I could see them from the cameras now. I was just checking the security cameras and the other two showed up. The one with the white boots and then the one with the blotches on the side. So um, I just put out some dry food. It is 9.09 .09 p.m. I just went outside to collect the paper platters. There was a little bit of dry food left on one of them, um, but I threw the platters away, and there's a few crunchies on the patio, so I wasn't going to like sweep them up or anything. If any of the cats come back, they could eat whatever's on the patio. One of the cats was on a patio chair. It was kind of just relaxing on the chair and uh, taking a bath. And then when I went outside, it kind of ran off to the back. Okay, it might be this one that's coming back. This is the one with the white paws. Um, if that's looking for any food, it could just eat whatever's left on the patio. And so, mission accomplished tonight. The cats ate and the platters were cleaned up and the garbage was taken out and hopefully uh, there will be no unwanted visitors tonight. I also made sure both gates are shut. So hopefully that will help deter uh, some potential wildlife also. There are obviously ways into the yard because the cats are coming in and out, but hopefully any larger animals will be deterred. And I'm, I'm glad. So this cat's now eating the crunchies off the patio, whatever's left. I did see all of the cats eat on the security camera footage. Um, they all ate food off the platters at some time, so I know they've all had some food. It's 7.30 p.m. I just put out a platter of food, so there's some homemade raw food on it along with some crunchies. We'll see if any of the cats come to eat it. When I went outside, one of the torties like flew across the patio. Uh, so that cat 
it was hanging around I don't know where and then I looked at the security camera footage and about an hour ago uh, the little cat maybe I'll call him tiny um, he was um, like walking through the patio and then earlier than that the one with the uh, the white paws like the little boots he was walking around so um, they've been in and out and normally uh, over the past few days um, they come around for food when the sun's starting to go down and the sun's starting to go down now so we'll see if they come and eat this it's about 8 p.m. and there are three or four cats outside eating off the platter so I'm putting another platter together and this is more of homemade raw food with some crunchies on top we'll see if they eat this so I just came outside and there's a cat to the left of me on the patio. I think it's the black and white one. And there's a cat. There was a cat to the right of me. There was also a uh, possum. So I just put down a new platter of food. Look at that. They ate almost all the food. They ate all the raw food off the other platter. And they left some of the crunchies. So hopefully they'll eat the food off this platter. And then I'll put some more food together for the other platter. Look at this. He's staring at me, he or she. I don't know if it's a he or she, but when I looked at this cat, all of a sudden I heard Sammy Davis Jr. So I'm wondering if I'm wondering if I should name this cat Sammy. Are you Sammy? Is your name Sammy? Sammy? Sammy could be like male or female. Hey Sammy. I wonder if that's the name of it. I just came inside and three of them ran back to the food. So I'm glad the food's a hit. I'm glad they like it. It's about 8.15 p.m. I just looked at the security cameras. The platters outside are clean. So I was gonna put some more food out. Here's Splashies by the back door. And the question is, the question is, are there any cats looking at him? Yep. You see them? It looks like the little baby. The little tiny one is right there, and one of the torties is on the step. I don't want to scare it. Yeah, like the torty's still on the step. Look at that. I don't know if this is in focus, guys. I'm sorry. And there they are. So I'm going to put some more food out. Hello. Stella's looking out the back door now. There's the little one. He was just walking toward me. The tortie's still on the step. There's Stella. Stella, do you see the babies outside? So here are two more platters of food. There is some homemade raw food. I mixed a bunch of water into it, and then I put some of the crunchies on top, some crunchies around the side. So we'll see if they eat that. It's 8.30. Here's Stella by the back door. I just checked the security camera and looks like both platters are empty again, so let's see if Stella's talking to anyone. No, there's no one near the steps. There's actually two cats eating off of a platter, but I'm gonna go put some more food out. The platters were completely empty again, so I just put out some more of the homemade raw food. So uh, this is it. That is a full pound of homemade raw food. And then I put more of the crunchies on top and these will be the final two platters. Then um, that'll make six platters of food, so each cat should have had plenty of food to eat. There's two cats right there on the patio, and there's another one or two kind of uh, a few feet away from them. It seems like they're getting a little bit braver, and I hope they eat fast. I don't know if it's supposed to rain tonight. It almost feels like it's starting to drizzle a little bit, so I'm gonna go inside, so hopefully they'll just eat really fast. Look at this. Look at this, I'm still out here. And uh, the one with the white shoes is eating, and then the other one. I think that's one of the torties. I'm sorry if this is not in focus. Another tortie just ran to the food. And I think the little one's over there too. See the little one? Reminds me of Simba as a kitten. Oh, there it goes. There goes the black and white one. looking at me. So they're definitely getting braver. It's only been a few days and I'm standing out here and they're eating food.
I just looked outside and there was a big raccoon. So I don't know if you could see it, but there's a cat here, a cat here, a cat there. The raccoon was here, it like wanted to go toward the food and the cats were charging at it. They were like, oh no, you don't, you're gonna leave. I don't know where it went, but this is what I'm saying. Like these cats are like a gang and there's definitely safety in numbers. Now there's another cat walking along the side of the garage. I don't know if that's the big one. It's hard to see who is who. But right now I got two of them looking at me. I know you can't see anything because it's dark. I just cranked the exposure, it didn't help. Um, the black and white one's staring at me. The one with the white paws is staring at me because when I saw the raccoon, I was yelling. I was like, hey, hey. And I was gonna open the back door, but then I saw that they were taking care of themselves. So there was three raccoons eating the food and I don't put out this food for raccoons to eat so I'm not really happy about this. The cats are all scattered about somewhere um, in the backyard area. This one's just sitting here. Some of them ran that way. So what I did was I opened the door and I was shining the flashlight on the raccoons. Can you see there's three of them? That's my flashlight, it's like square. Um, Stay away. Don't go near them. There's a cat underneath the table. The black and white one is under the table. See the black and white one under the table? So, um, yeah, I'm not happy. I did not make raw food for these raccoons to eat it. I made raw food for the cats to eat it. So basically, this means that I can't put any more food out tonight for the cats. Um, because the other wildlife's just going to eat it. I don't know if you could see it. Okay way way back in the corner of the fence there's a cat back there at least the cats got uh, the majority of it so it seems that what happened was that the one raccoon came by and the other cats were like oh no you get out of here and then it brought its family members they're like oh what is this a gang fight i don't know if you could see this so here's the raccoons right do you see the cat in the grass not far? Yeah, these cats are so brave, it's crazy. But that's how they're surviving. They're surviving by being brave. And then there's, see, there's two others in the back. They're coming up. I hope there's not gonna be a problem. So now there's three cats over there. Three cats back there. There are the raccoons, and there's a cat under the table, and there's a, actually a few cats near the bottom of the table. There's one, look, there's one. So the raccoons are kind of surrounded. Look at this. Look at that one, just sitting on the patio. The black and white one's kind of taking a bath under there. It looks like they're almost done with the food. Look at this. Keep walking, buddy. Keep walking. Is he gonna go to the water? Stay away! The cat's still under the table and it went under the table. Oh, now there's four cats in the back. Who's that one way under the fence? Oh, maybe the other one went around. Maybe the one that ran off went around. I don't need this drama. So I think it's pretty obvious that what I would have to do is make sure that the food goes out earlier, hopefully before any raccoons come wandering around. The raccoon was smelling the back of one of the cats. There better not be a fight. Now they rac oh, they got some cats cornered in the back. So the issue is that when I yell at the raccoons for them to leave, the cats freak out also. 
Although I think the black and white ones still might be around. I could be wrong. But all the ones in the back freaked out. My goal was just to get the raccoons to freak out enough to leave and leave the cats alone. Because if the raccoons are more scared of me, then they'll leave before they can cause any harm to the cats. So I didn't hear any kind of cat fights or anything. Hopefully there weren't any. But with feral cats, you know, feral cats are very quiet. So they don't make a lot of noise. So I'm out here and the black cat is right here, the black and white one. And I was talking to it and it laid down like it wanted to be friendly. I was like, hey Sammy. Hey Sammy. How you doing Sammy? This is a super bright flashlight. Here, I just I just put the lantern on. It's one of those tactical flashlights. It could really be blinding, so I don't want to bother this cat. But look, I'm here and it's just hanging out. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Sammy. There it is. It only ran a little bit. It's still hanging out. I just walked to the driveway and it was like almost following me. And then I came back and it just scooted near the greenhouse again. I think it's really brave and I think it likes the fact that I was trying to stand up um, to the raccoons for the cats. I was trying to defend them. Alright, so I'm going to go in now. And that's it. So this is my flashlight. It is a tactical flashlight and it is really, really strong. If this is on high and you shine this in someone's eyes, you can temporarily blind them. So um, I'm thinking maybe I should just find another flashlight. I, I have other flashlights around the house. I should find one that's not so strong um, to use with the cats. It's 12.05 and the little cat is sitting under the feeding table by the water bowl. So this morning I put a small plate of crunchies outside just to see if anyone would come by. And this little one came by along with the the torty with the stripe down the middle of its face. I'm kind of thinking maybe that one should be named Ziggy because it kind of reminds me of Ziggy Stardust with you know the stripe down the face. I'm not settling on any names yet. Everything is still up in the air with regards to names. But what I did then was I put a platter of food out um, with some friskies and some crunchies. And they came back and ate. And I'm pretty sure this little one is a, is a boy because I just checked the security camera footage and his backside looked like a boy. So then I put some more crunchies on the platter just in case someone wanted to come by and eat more. And I checked the security camera again, and it was the little guy along with the one with the, the white boots. Now, if I name the black and white one Sammy in honor of Sammy Davis Jr., I'm kind of thinking maybe the one with the white boots should be Frank. Um, you know, like Sammy, Frank, and Dean, the Rat Pack. Maybe the blotchy one would be Dean. Uh, maybe this one would be Frank because the white boots kind of remind me of Go-Go Boots. And Frank Sinatra's daughter had that song, These Boots Are Made For Walking. Um, I don't think this cat is female. I think this cat is a male. Otherwise, I think it was Nancy Sinatra that's saying that. Maybe the cat would be called Nancy, but I don't think it's... I don't think it's female. I think it's male. Um, also, I'm going to put some more some more food out. I'd rather they come by during the day than deal with the raccoons. Also, if they come by during the day, um, if I need to trap them and you know take them to a vet to have them spayed or neutered, it would be better. I don't want to do it at night. And um, also, it's supposed to rain later. So 
So here's another platter. Uh, this is a, another can of the Friskies. It's one of their seafood based foods along with some some crunchies. This is what's going on with the other plates. It's about 7.30 p.m. and it's just starting to rain now. It's a very light rain and I put a platter of food out a little while ago and one of the torties ate some food and then I just took another plate out and the cat with the blotches, um, the blotchy tabby, was uh, eating some food, but as soon as I opened the door, he ran. So hopefully he'll come back. And um, hopefully this table will keep any rain and water out of the plates. There he is. See him? There's still a little bit of food left on the platter he's eating on and then on the one next to it that's the full one. I'm pretty sure this one is a male based upon security camera footage. I think the smallest one is a male. I think the one with like the white boots is a male. I think this one is a male. I. I don't know what the black and white one is, and I think the two torties are girls. It's around 8 p.m. right now, and the platters were completely empty. So I just put some more food out. I uh, put out another can of Friskies. Um, I mixed a lot of water into it, and I also put out some crunchies, so if they come back to eat, fine. If not, maybe they had enough. I don't know uh, where else they're eating. I don't know who else is feeding them. I don't know where they go during the day. I don't know where they go the rest of the night. I do know that they're pretty active at night. I do see them on the security camera footage walking about the yard, um, but I don't really know. So here's one. So that's good. I'd rather the cats get the food than um, the raccoons. It looks like there's two now. There's one on the left and one on the right. I'm checking out the security camera footage. Look at what's going on here. So there's a cat eating here. Here's the other cat. And there's a possum in the background, right? So this cat moves. And the possum is just like walking around. It's looking at the cat. Now it's just nonchalantly coming and eating off this platter. So there's a cat eating on this platter and a possum eating on this platter. These cats are really brave and they seem to be friends with most of the wildlife. They weren't afraid of the raccoons yesterday or the night before, and they're not afraid of possums. These cats are definitely outdoor survivors. There's another cat now in the back. Is that the black and white one? I don't know if they're going to attack the possum. I know that's a tortie. There's two. That's one of the torties. So this camera got moved. And I'm trying to figure out who moved this camera. Okay. We got a good shot of the back side. Yeah, those torties are... appear to be girls. Usually they are. There's another, there's another cat. So the possum left. Obviously it was surrounded by four cats. Five. There's the fifth cat. I want to know how this camera got moved, though. 
because it's no longer pointing at this table. I don't know if one of the cats rubbed up against it or if a raccoon came by or something. I don't know. But it should be on on this clip. There's another two minutes left. Well, I do have to say, I mean, they're a happy cat family. They all get along really well. Or at least it appears that way in any of the um, footage that I've seen. This one looks like a boy. This is the little, the little tiny one. Oh no. Did the camera freeze? Oh, this is not good. I want to see what happened. There's audio, but there's no video. Now there's a skunk. I put two platters of dry food out. Do you see it? The skunk is eating the food and the cats are watching it. Here's the skunk, there's a cat, and there's two cats. They're just like, okay, let the skunk eat. As long as that skunk does not spray them. Please don't spray my patio furniture. Oh, look at this. The cats seem to want to get along with everyone. They don't want to start problems. They just want to peacefully coexist. Skunk's still eating. Look at that. So there's some over here. There, there's some cats under the patio furniture. And there's a cat there. Look at the. It's gonna lay down. The cat's laying down to watch the skunk eat. And the other ones are just hanging out. Do you see? You can see their eyes. And there goes the skunk. Eh, skunk's just walking away. And the cat went right to the platter where their skunk was eating. These cats are really something else. It is 6.11 p.m. And that's Boo. He's meowing because he wants some of this food, but he's not getting it because he just had his dinner. So this is a can of Friskies. I think it's a turkey and giblets with some water mixed in and then there's some dry cat food uh, mixed in with it on the platter. I'm using a plastic platter today because it has been raining all day. It's really wet outside. I don't know if the cats are gonna come and eat anything. I saw one of the cats um, on the security camera came by a few hours ago looking for some food, checking out the feeding table. So I'll put this out and I'll see if anyone shows up. If they do, fine. If they don't, fine. Boo, it's not for you. It's for the poor cats outside, okay? It's for the less fortunate cats that are living outside, Boo. So everything outside is very wet and it's still raining uh, lightly. And that's one of the old platters that I used to feed the cats on when they lived outside. So this platter is probably like six years old and it fits under this table. The only thing is that you know, with six cats eating under this table. They all can't fit under it at the same time. When I was only feeding, you know, three at a time, Stella and the kittens, they fit well under the table. They actually had a smaller table at the time, I believe. So this table is just a cheap piece of plywood from Home Depot uh, that has been cut down. I think it's two feet by four feet, but I could be wrong. It might be like 18 inches by 36 inches. 
Um, and then um, it's just a two by two that's been cut into, I think those are 12 inch segments that are the legs. And I think it's just held together with some nails or some screws. Uh, Grandpa Farrell made this um, when uh, Hydrox and Ditto were living outside. So um, yeah, it's just it's just a really cheap thrown together table, but it does the job of uh, keeping rain or snow off of cat food and uh, giving the cats a little bit of shelter while they're eating. It's 6.39 p.m. and here's Stella. She's watching one of the torties eat the food on the platter. It showed up a few minutes ago. There it is. It was looking up at the window before. I didn't want to scare it. I don't know if the other cats are going to show up or not, but... At least this one's eating. So here's Stella. And there's another cat sitting in the grass. Maybe this is the one with the white paws. To me, this looks like one that I haven't seen before. Because the small one, the tiny one, doesn't have a white bib like that. Maybe this is the one with the white boots. Maybe it just looks different because it's been out in the rain. Let's see what happens. Are they going to greet each other? Yeah, stretching, good sign. Kissing. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one with the boots. Okay, there's still plenty of food on that platter. They could share it. Did you see what the tortie did? So the tortie walked over to the other cat and was like, Oh, hey, how are you? You can come and eat with me. And invited the other cat over to eat. Isn't that nice? So I'm happy it's earlier today. And um, I would like to get these cats on an earlier schedule. Look at Boo. He's watching the cats. I put out another can of Friskies mixed with some water and a whole bunch more of the dry food. So the platter is full again. They ate everything off of that platter. So the two cats um, finished off a 5.5 ounce can of Friskies. So that means they had like a half can each and they had a lot of crunchies. And look at these two. They act like they haven't had food all day. They just had a very nice dinner not too long ago. But they're reminding me of when these two used to be living outside. This is how I used to see them all the time. I always used to see Stella and Boo, and this is what they would do. They would be together like this, and they'd be waiting for food or looking for food or eating food if I gave it to them. Maybe it's bringing back memories for them. They're remembering when the two of them used to be outside like that. So it's now about 8 p.m. and it's raining again and there are two more cats eating. This is, um, it looked like it was the, the small one and then the blotchy one, the classic tabby. So it seems that they're eating in pairs. Which is good. Because then they could fit uh, under the table better, and it looks like it looks like that platter is just about empty again. What I'm realizing is I should clean out um, the alcove under the house 
Um, not that I have a lot of stuff under it, um, but I have more stuff under it than I used to um, when the cats used to hang out there. So I should definitely move stuff out because then these cats would have some place dry to hang out. I just put a third platter of food out. Um, it's the same thing, another can of the Friskies and a whole bunch of dry food. So four of the six have eaten so far. Um, the ones who haven't are the black and white one and another one of the torties. So um, hopefully they'll be the next ones to come by. Maybe they're coming in shifts. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. That's it for the night. Um, hopefully it won't be raccoons or possums or anything. I'll check the security camera in a little while and see what happened to it. It's about 6 p.m. right now. I haven't seen any of the kittens around. Um, so I'm going to put some food out. This is the homemade raw food that I made for them with some crunchies on top. Hopefully they'll show up within an hour or so because I don't want the food to go bad. I put it under the feeding table. It's not raining right now, but the table is still here. So I figure, why not? Hopefully the ants won't get to it. Also, I want to show you something. See this hole? This is the hole in the foundation of my neighbor's house where the cats used to go. I don't know if this kitten family still goes down there, but this is where I saw like Stella go in years and years ago. And I think I've even seen Hydrox and Ditto go in here. It's funny how the cats all kind of know where the hidey holes are for them. Um, so this house is completely under renovation right now. Um, I don't know what they plan on doing with this part, like where the hole is. Hopefully they're not going to fill it in while there are cats inside of it. I mean, with a hole like that, I would think there'd be rodents inside of it also, but I don't know. Maybe that's like, maybe that's why the cats like to go in it because rodents are in there. I know it's like so loud right now with all the cars and the airplane and everything, but um, I just wanted to show that to you while uh, I got a good shot of it. It's 6.25 p.m. I just looked out the window and saw this. So this is one of the cats. Not sure which one, but it looks like they ate all the raw food off the platter and then left the piles of crunchies. Maybe they're going to go back and eat the crunchies. It seems like these cats really like the raw food, which is fine because it's cheaper to make than buying friskies. It's 6.38, I just checked the security camera footage and about three or four of the cats showed up. They completely finished everything that's on the platter. It looks like they're in the back of the yard now. I'm gonna go uh, put some more food together for them and put more food out. I just filled up the platter with more homemade raw food. I put a bunch of crunchies on top. There's all kinds of like little bees or wasps or something um, flying around here. So I'm gonna put this back under the table. Hopefully the cats will eat it. There's one of the cats now. That might be Ziggy. I haven't 100% decided on that name yet. I'm gonna go inside so they can come back and eat. So the minute I went outside, they all scattered. They all ran away. Two of them ran under the fence in the back where we just saw the little cat. So. Hopefully they'll come back. So the second I turned the camera off, the torty came a running to the food. And then there's the other one. The one with the white boots. So at least they're eating. I haven't seen the black and white one. Sometimes it's hard to tell the cats apart when you don't see them like in full lighting because a torty can kind of look like a tabby in the dark. It's about 12.30 p.m. and I put a plate of food out a few hours ago, maybe like three hours ago or so. And it's a can of Friskies and a whole bunch of dry food and nobody has touched it. Nobody's been around. 
So I'm just documenting this because I don't know where the cats go. Hopefully someone else is also feeding them and taking care of them. Um, we'll just see what happens. It's 12.45 p.m. and Boo just let me know that there's a cat outside. He was running around the house and I could tell by the way he was looking out his window. So this looks like it's the small one. Hopefully the food is still good. I mean, it's been out there for a few hours. I see some like bees flying around it. Hopefully it's not full of ants. But the cat's eating it. It looks like he's eaten like half of it already. Wish those bees would go away. Boo, you see that? You see who's outside? Who is that person? Who's the person outside, Boo? Who is that person? What's their name? They all need names. What's their name, Boo? Hmm? Look what he did. He ate all the canned food and he left the dry food. It's about 6, 10 p.m. I put a platter of food out with some friskies and dry food. Looks like the cat is eating the friskies. There's a whole bunch of um, like those little bees swarming around. I think this is the tiny cat. Now, I thought the tiny cat was a mackerel tabby. I'm pretty sure it is. So maybe this is the blotchy tabby. This is obviously a blotchy tabby. Um, but I don't know. Now I'm starting to wonder if there's more than six cats. It's 7.06 p.m. and there's the little cat. So it is a mackerel tabby. The one we saw... A little while ago was the blotchy one the classic tabby and stella and boo are watching from the back door that's how i was like i wonder if anyone's outside they were both very intently looking out the back door it's 7 15 there's another cat outside this is a blotchy tabby i don't know if this is the same one that was just here a little while ago it looks like it might be darker fur than the other one but it's hard to tell oh and here's one of the torties so I'm glad they're eating. If they finish the food, I'll put more out. I do have to take some garbage out though. I might have to go out the front door and walk around the entire yard. I don't want to disturb them. So now there's four and the one with the white bib is looking at me because they want more food. There's one in the grass, the little one's out in the grass. And then it looks like the um, the tortie's eating with the blotchy one. So I'm going to put another platter of food out. I just came out with another platter of food. This platter is basically empty. And they all ran under the fence. There's one right there, but the others are under the fence. Oh, there's another one popping its head up. There's the one that wants to eat. The one with the white. Are they going to come over to me? Come on. Come here, baby. Come on over here. You gonna come over here and eat? I just came inside, see? Look, it's jogging up to the plate. Now it's walking, it's looking around. Here comes the other one. I think I'll, um, I think I'll mix up some more food for the other plate and uh, bring it out and just put it on the plate. I have a whole bunch of food in this cup. It's some raw food as well as some canned food. This one's not moving away too fast, which is good. Hey baby, I'm going to give you some food. He kind of looks like Stella, doesn't he? Hello. Hello. Here, food. Come on. Getting bit up by bugs. I don't know how these cats can do it. There's a whole bunch of food. It's 10.30 and I just looked at the security camera footage and there were several cats um, just kind of poking around looking for food on the empty platters. So I just made some homemade cat food today 
and I put it out on the platter. So we'll see if they come back. We'll see if they eat it. It's not raw cat food. It's actually cooked cat food. So I don't know if they're going to like it. We'll see. This is what's going on outside right now. So there's three of the cats eating the food that I just put out. So this is the homemade cat food. And they seem to be enjoying it a lot. It's 11.20 p.m. and I was just shutting the window in Boo's room a little bit and kind of getting everything ready for bed. And I just looked out the window and one of the babies was right here, right by the back door. It's been hanging out. I don't know where it went. Boo just jumped up next to me. Um, maybe it wants more food. I'm going to go to the back door and, and see if it's near the door. Yeah, it's right by the door. I think this is the little one. The little tiny one. You probably can't see it through the door. But it's there. I'm going to open it very slowly. This is the little baby one. It's looking at me right now. Hello? Hello? You want food? So the cat's eating, which is good. I think that's the cat we just saw. Um, and it is definitely starting to get colder out. It's probably in the 60s right now, so I feel bad for the cats as it gets colder. Yeah, this is the little baby that was just by the back door. I'm glad he's eating. It's 6.50 a.m. and I was just watching some security camera footage from this morning. And one of the torties, I think, uh, Ziggy, oh yeah, look, look. One of the torties has been hanging out by the food bowls, just like sitting by the food bowls like this. I don't know what they're doing right now. Maybe they're hunting something. But it seems it's been waiting for some food. Oh, it's hunting a bug. It's 8 a.m. and I'm still getting ready for my day. I'm just about done. And look at this. So this is one of the tabbies. I, I don't think this is a torty. I think this is the, maybe this is one. No, this is one of the tabbies, I think. This is the blotchy tabby, I think. It's hard to tell these cats apart sometimes. I'm pretty sure that's the blotchy tabby. I have to come up with a name for that cat. It's 8.15 a.m. Finally getting the cats served. Um, so this is some of the homemade cat food um, with the cooked chicken. And this is some crunchies. I'm going to put it down for the cats. I don't see anyone right now, but hopefully they'll show up and eat up. I just came inside and look at this. Look. Three cats. So... While I was getting ready for my day, I was thinking about the cats and two names came to me. So for the blotchy tabby, I keep calling it blotchy, but it actually has like rings on its side. So I was thinking Ringo, the name just came to me. I was like, oh, Ringo. So I'm gonna see how Ringo fits that cat. And then for the little one, I was gonna call it Richard, like little Richard. So we have Sammy Davis Jr., Sammy, Ringo, Little Richard, which is Richard, Ziggy, Ziggy Stardust. And then the question is, who is this guy with the white? I still have to figure him out and the other Torty. I like to let the names come to me 
Like, I did not consciously think Ringo, it just kind of came to me. I was like, oh, Ringo. And the same thing for Richard. I was not consciously thinking about it, it just kind of came to me. Like, when I was outside the other day and I heard Sammy Davis Jr. So, I'll see what I hear for the other two cats. And we'll see how these names fit um, Ringo and Richard. We'll see if that fits them. But I'm really happy that the cats like this homemade food. The raw food is so much easier to make than the cooked food, at least for me. Because all you have to do is prep the meat, put it through the grinder and freeze it. When you have to actually cook it, that adds a lot of steps to the process, a lot of time to the process. And overall, it's just much messier because everything gets like really greasy and heavy and there's just a really big difference. I feel like when I make the raw food, everything is nice and fresh. And then after you cook it, it's just not nearly as fresh. But it was a good experiment to make the cooked food. And to see how cats would react to it. And the cats love it. It also could be made in a series of steps. Like you could hard boil the eggs a day before. You could steam some vegetables a day before. You could cook the hearts and livers the day before. Then you could cook your chicken the day you're gonna mix it all together. I forgot how long it takes to cook chicken and then you obviously want it to cool. So that adds like another several hours to the process. And then you have to wash all of the pots and pans that you cooked everything in. That also adds a lot of steps and time to the process. So I think this is a good sign that the cats are here in the morning, especially if I am going to try to get them spayed and neutered because now is the time that I would be putting a trap out. And I do have to call some local vets to see who could handle something like that. I have uh, did some research. I found one that supposedly handles TNRs locally. So we'll see what happens, um, what their intake procedure is. And I do want to call the vet that I take my cats to because I'm familiar with them and I know they're good. So I don't know if they handle anything like that. And there is another local animal hospital that I would want to contact to maybe have as another backup just to see if they would um, do something like that. I don't want to use the animal hospital that I took Hydrox to and Ditto to and I am really not a fan of that uh, practice, that location. Um, I've been taking the cats there just because it's, it's fairly local and I know they're 24-7. But when I did the math, I mean, their their prices are outrageous. And there is another local um, emergency animal hospital, but they're only open nights and weekends. They're not open during the day. So um, it never hurts to have more than one animal hospital that you go to or even more than one vet for various situations, especially if you have more than one animal Anyone who's been to various vets know they all have their strong points and weaknesses. So once they finish that, I'll put some more food out for them. Meanwhile, I'm going to get started with the inside cats. So the cat is almost done eating. Or should I say Richard is almost done eating. And... Something that I just realized with regards to naming cats is that what I always look for is resonance. Resonance is basically how a name resonates or how it, how it feels with regards to the cat 
its surroundings, the universe, if you want to take it to a larger level. So I don't settle on a cat's name until I feel like it really resonates with me, with the cat, and just with life in general. So that's why I kind of, I'm kind of, you know, not set on a name until I feel one that resonates. So that's what I'm really trying to do here. You think he looks like a Richard? Little Richard? I think it resonates with me, but we'll have to see how it resonates with him. Here's Boo. He's watching the cats. You can tell when he's watching a cat because he gets very intense. Right now he's very intense. Hey Boo, I'm going outside. Hey Boo, I gotta move. Hey Boo, you gotta move. Okay, come on. Let's move. See how smart he is? Look at what's going on here. Three cats. I'm standing here holding a bowl of food and a container of crunchies. I just want to see what they'll do. Are they going to run or are they just going to hang out? Hello. Hello. I just put the homemade food on the plate. I'm gonna add some crunchies. The lawn needs to be mowed. The landscaper is supposed to show up today, so I'm trying to get this done early. I'm standing here near the food, and this one is starting to walk toward it. The grass is all dried out because of this drought that we've been having. Okay, I'm gonna leave. Backing away, backing away, backing away. Look at this. Look at this. Look. I'm only about eight feet away. Look at this. Look at this. The tabby reminds me so much of Simba. Oh my gosh. Okay, you eat. I just came inside. There are like these little bees or wasps or something that are trying to eat the food also. I was trying to shoo them away, but... They really like that homemade food. I mean, why wouldn't they? It's roasted chicken and sardines. I put dry food out also. I'm making soup with the bones. So I put the bones in a pot along with some water. I'm not adding any other ingredients because I don't know if I'm gonna be adding this to the cat food, mixing it into the cat food. I put out some more of the homemade food maybe like 45 minutes ago and none of the cats have come back to eat it. So that should mean that they've eaten enough food this morning and they're full, which is good. I think I only saw four of them. So if the other two show up, they can eat this. Um, if not, that's fine also. The chicken broth is continuing to cook. I'm probably gonna simmer it for at least two hours to get all the flavor out of the bones. So this makes it even more economical to make your own cat food because then you get all this chicken broth. And this chicken broth uh, can be put into the cat food mixed in instead of water for additional nutrition. Or if I wanted to, I could then put additional ingredients in here and make it suitable for human consumption. It's perfectly suitable for human consumption now without additional ingredients, but people tend to like additional flavors like some carrots, celery, onion, that kind of stuff. I could actually put carrots and celery in here for cats, 
um, that's not bad for them, but I'm just making it really plain. It's 9 a.m. I slept a little bit longer than I normally do today. And I looked out the window a little while ago, and little Richard and Ringo were hanging out on the patio. So I just put out a plate of food. This is some canned friskies with some dry food. And this is Richard. He's eating the food. So I went outside, I put the platter down, and then I was filling up one of the big water bowls, and he started eating while I was still outside. So then when I moved over a lake, started to walk inside, uh, then he kind of ran away into um, this back area. And then I called his name, I was like, hey Richard, go and eat. And he stopped and he looked at me. He's like, what? So he came inside and he went to eat. I was watching some security camera footage from overnight and last night was a full moon. Like it was a big full orange moon. It looked like a Halloween moon. And all the cats outside were running around the patio. It was so funny, I never saw them do that before. They actually knocked this camera down. See how it's facing the wrong direction? I have to go fix that. They were hanging out on the patio chairs and they were doing some play fighting, which is the first time I saw them do that. Splash and Simba used to do that all the time. But I'm hoping maybe because now that they're eating better, they're eating on a regular basis that they have more energy. Because you know, if cats don't have energy, if they're not really eating a lot, they're gonna conserve their energy. But maybe since they're getting a better diet now, uh, they have more energy to play and run around just for the fun of it versus just for survival. It's about 11 a.m. I just looked out the window and saw this. So no one had been eating the food, like Richard ate some of it. And then um, I just looked out. So it looks like Richard came back with the one with the white shoes. It's 6.40 p.m. And it looks like that is Richard and Ringo. From what I could tell, I could be wrong. It's hard to tell. So I put out some of the homemade cat food, not the raw, they had the raw yesterday. I put out the homemade cooked cat food, which they seem to have eaten most of, and then I put some of the, um, I put some dry food in the middle. Oh no, that's not Ringo, that's the other one with the white. I still don't have a name for him yet. Chuck Berry wore white shoes. There's some, there's quite a few photos of Chuck Berry wearing white shoes. So I was thinking, I was thinking of calling him Chuck. So this would be Little Richard and Chuck. But I don't know how that would really fit him yet. I'm still working on what resonates with him. Well, I'm very happy that they like the homemade food. I still have a bunch more of it to put out for them. It's about 5.30 p.m. right now. This is what's left of the bird seed for the day. I've been putting seed out for the birds and they've been enjoying it and the cats have been enjoying watching them. And this is what's going on with the cat food. So the platter on the left is the platter I put out this morning. It had a can of friskies on it and some dry food. You can see there's still dry food on it. So the cats are not starving. I have not seen them much lately over the past few days. We had about two straight days of rain. So I don't know where they go. Wherever they go, that's where they were. And today I saw Ringo for a little bit and then the one with like the white boots. 
Um, I saw him and I think I saw Richard for a little bit. I might have seen one of the torties, but they didn't stick around long. They were just kind of um, passing through or eating a few bites of food and then leaving. So the plate on the right, um, I just put out maybe like a half hour ago and I saw someone eating that. I don't remember exactly who because I just kind of quickly glanced out of the window and it's hard to see um, with the table in the way. So um, we'll see if someone comes back to eat them. Again, the cats have not been around much over the past few days and that's fine. I did call several local vets today to find out about spaying and neutering and yeah, I'm having no luck with regards to that. Um, I talked to uh, the vet that I take the cats to and I knew they really didn't uh, do stuff like that, knowing how long it takes to get appointments there. And you know, I usually have to wait at least a week. I did not think that they were set up to do like, um, if I have a cat trapped, uh, to be able to bring it there and get it spayed or neutered. But the receptionist that I spoke to was able to give me some other information for a few other people to check out. So um, that's what I did. And I also called a local vet who is known for handling uh, TNRs. And uh, due to the vet shortage, they say that they can no longer handle um, any kind of spay and neuters from individuals. They will only work with shelters and rescue groups. So I was like, well, what am I? I'm not a rescue person. I'm rescuing these cats. I'm TNRing them. So, uh, um, I just thought that was really kind of messed up that they would not even talk to me about that. That was kind of rude. So um, I have a few other leads and it will be interesting to see who else around here can handle something like that. Hydrox is pretty much living in my yard for a while. Ditto was pretty much living in my yard. Boo was completely living in my yard for several months uh, before he came inside. These cats are more transient. They're just kind of uh, come by, visit, see if there's any food, leave. If I come outside, they run out of the yard, pretty much. That's what they've been doing. So, um, it's definitely a, a different situation. I just came inside and here's Stella. She's hanging out in this little bucket. How you doing, Stella? So when Stella was living outside with Boo, um, she was here like every day. She was eating all of her meals here. Her and the kittens were... Uh, eating out of the automatic feeder and you know I was able to pet her and I was working on socializing her and training her. It was a very different situation than it is with these uh, feral cats right now. Because Stella was here so often I was able to really keep a good observation on her behavior and notice if she was in heat or if she wasn't in heat. So the first time that I saw her in heat, I was like, okay, you're an inside cat now. And I kept her completely separate from any of the other cats uh, that could get her pregnant. So the issue with these cats outside is there's six of them. From my observations, I think two of them are female, four of them are male. I don't have a good observation on their behaviors right now. And so it's very different from um, the situation with Stella and Boo uh, and them being outside, even with uh, Hydrox and Ditto. Now Hydrox and Ditto had tipped ears already, so I kind of knew that they had been uh, spayed or neutered. With this set of cats, uh, I have not noticed any tipped ears. I noticed one on the larger cat or what appeared to be one of the larger cats. But again, it's getting hard to keep track of these cats because there just seems to be a lot of them. And um, what's hard is that they're not here on a regular basis. Even with me putting food out more regularly now, they're not coming around uh, on a regular basis. So that leads me to think they're getting fed somewhere else. Um, other people are feeding them and hopefully other people will be taking care of spaying and neutering also. So I'm just going to take it one day at a time. Uh, I might end up calling a local rescue group and just seeing uh, if there's anything they could do. Maybe they'll put some traps around here locally and see uh, if they can TNR them. So, um, that would be good because it would take it off of my hands and off my shoulders and with everything that I have going on, I, um, you know, it's not something I need to be dealing with. So again, I'm just taking everything one day at a time now. There's no reason for anyone to, 
uh, get stressed out or freaked out or worry about anything. Everything is fine. Right, Stella? It's about 8 p.m. right now, and some of the cats have been eating. I'm not sure which one this is, but I've refilled these plates several times now with the homemade raw food that I made for them. And there's also some dry food on the plates, and they're eagerly eating all of the homemade raw food, and they're actually leaving the dry food. So that's interesting. I'm happy they're eating the raw food. I'm mixing in a lot of water, so they're getting some good hydration that way. Even though I did uh, refill both of the big water bowls, sometimes cats don't drink enough water, so it's good for them to get liquid in their diet. And yeah, I'm gonna go back inside now. If they finish everything that's on the plates, um, I'll put more food out, but for now that's good. It's 7 a.m. and we got torrential downpours last night. It was such strong rain. It woke me up a few times and we had thunderstorms too. Um, I don't know where the cats go, the outside cats go. Um, it's good that we got rain because we definitely need it. We've been in kind of a drought this summer, but I was thinking about them. I was like, I hope they're someplace nice and dry. These are the platters that were left out um, under the feeding table. Uh, the cats ate most of the food last night before it started to rain, but they've been completely flattened and need to be cleaned up. It's 6.48 p.m. I'm just about to feed the cats. Boo walked over to the back door and he just like stopped and stared and I was like, what are you looking at? And I looked outside and right there on the patio was the big tabby. And here's the big tabby now. It's eating some leftover food. So I put some food out this morning. I put out some canned food and some dry food and it wasn't really eaten. Look at this. Here comes little Richard. Is that little Richard? Checking out the cat and there's another cat there's another cat, who's that? Is that Ringo? They're looking very cautious. I still think they're related to this cat. I don't know if this is the mom or what. Because, because they do come around when the cat comes around. We saw them approaching. It could be a situation where if this is the mom, the mom is like, hey guys, you need to kind of do your own thing. Stella wasn't like that with her kittens. Stella was very, very close to her kittens. She did not want them out of her sight. Um, you know, she did not want them to be independent. Um, they all lived outside together until the kittens were about nine months old. They were actually about the size of these cats when they were still living outside, so. Yeah, I don't know. It's a mystery. Is this big tabby related to the other cats or are they not related? Are they a distant relative? Are they, you know, is it like a mom or a dad? It's very interesting. So anyway, I'm going to go feed the inside cats and then when the inside cats are done, I'm going to put some more food out for the little babies outside. Here's Boo, he's doing his job. He just stretched out his neck, so I got to look out the window again. Someone's meowing. Who's meowing? Who's meowing? Is this cat meowing? No, I don't think this one's meowing. Then there's these two here. Where's it coming from? That's not Boo meowing. So it was this big tabby that's been meowing. Because this is a security camera footage. And it's definitely this cat that was meowing. I'm going to play it again. It appears to be looking for 
one of the other cats, I would think. I hope it's not in pain. When Hydrox and Ditto lived outside, they would meow like that to each other. That's how they meowed to each other to communicate. Like to find each other. 7.15, I'm taking some food out. So this is one of the cans of Friskies with some homemade chicken broth mixed in and uh, some dry food. I bought some more paper platters today. I went to the Christmas tree shop and I'm gonna put this out for the cats. Oh, there's one of them. It just walked behind the fence. So there's the fresh food and I'm gonna throw the other platter away. Okay, he was just on the patio. And then when he saw me walking in, he moved. There he is, you see him? See his tail? He's waiting for me to go inside. There he is, he's walking over. He's checking it out. He's not gonna eat it? All right, I wonder where he ate. Maybe he's waiting for someone to join him. Oh, look at this. Oh my God. Five of them at once. Are there new ones? I'm sorry if it was blurry. All right. Uh, um, no, that's, that's the five. The only one that's not there is the tuxedo. So Sammy is missing. I got to bring another platter out. I'm coming outside with another platter. I'm trying to figure out which cat is which. They ran to the back. They're still there though. All right, so there's Richard cleaning his butt. I still don't, I still have not settled on a name for the one with the white boots. Um, the two torties are in the back corner. Hey, be nice. Be nice to each other. Here, I'm giving you food. Ready? I just put another platter of food under the table and look at this. Look at this. They're hanging out. The, they're probably 12 feet away from me. Looks like they're getting comfortable. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello, little baby. What's your name? What's your name? Okay, I'll go inside so you can eat, okay? I'll go inside. So right now, there are three eating. And there's one sitting there. So that's four. There's plenty of room on the platters for the other cats to come and eat. We'll check back in a little while and see what happened. It's 728. Do you see what's going on here? The cat is on top of the table. I don't know if the table's sturdy enough because those legs are kind of wobbly. I'm thinking his name is Charlie because I was thinking about Chuck and you know Chuck could fit because of Chuck Taylor's you know the sneakers and also for Chuck Berry because Chuck Berry wore white shoes so it could be like Chuck but he doesn't seem to be a Chuck and then I was like well what about Charles I don't know if he seems to be a Charles but maybe a Charlie and Charlie could be male or female so in case I'm wrong um, it could go male or female. <gasps> Look at this. Look at this. Now someone's on this table. Is that Ziggy? Or is that the other one? So the only one that would still need a name would be the other Torty. I don't know if this is the other Torty. So if that was Charlie, then we have Sammy as the black and white one. We have Little Richard, we have Ringo, we have Ziggy, 
and then it would just be the other torty, but I would have to get a better look at the other torty. Oh, are they telling me they want more friskies? Look at the platters. It looks like they ate all the canned food and left the dry food. All right, I'm going to go and uh, open up another can of wet food. They're getting brave. So here's another can of friskies. I put it in a cup and then I add some of the homemade chicken broth to it. So it kind of makes like a soup. And there's, there's the cat. What's your name? Are you Chuck? Is your name Chuck? Maybe his name is Chuck. It kind of, it's like Charlie Brown. In which case his name would be Charlie Brown. Oh, look at this. This one's right here. Which, rem this one reminds me, Little Richard reminds me so much of Simba. Oh, look, they're kissing each other. Chuck or Charlie? What's your name? Is your name Chuck or Charlie? Chuck or Charlie? I am pretty close to these cats right now. Maybe like eight feet. Chuck? Charlie? Charlie? Chuck? I don't know. It could be both. Maybe I'll call it both. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Charlie. Which one? Tell me which one you like. Chuck or Charlie? Chuck? Or Charlie? Are you Chuck? Or are you Charlie? That poor cat doesn't know what's going on. It just wants food. There was still about a third of the wet food on the platters, but I just gave him the other can anyway. I can't believe how like comfortable they are right now. I'm only like six feet away from them. I think tomorrow I'm going to see if I could call the local rescue and see if they uh, can be of any assistance with regards to um, getting these cats trapped and neutered. I would like to, um, like the end goal would be to get them trained, socialized, and adopted out, preferably in pairs at least. I mean, I don't think anyone would take all six of them. I mean, that would be the ideal situation. The absolute ideal situation would be to keep all six together, um, but I don't know how ideal that would be. I mean, I don't know how many people that would take six cats. People might take two cats. Maybe someone would take three or four, but I would definitely want to keep them somehow together, even if it's not like the entire group together, even if it's just like in pairs. Hey baby. You're pretty. You're handsome. You look like Stella. You remind me of Stella. You look like a mix of Stella and Simba. It's about 9 a.m. and I just came outside with a platter of food. I've seen two cats this morning. I saw little Richard walking around and then I, I think I saw the, uh, the torty that doesn't have a name yet. Um, and I'm putting this food out just to see if anyone wants it. It's under the feeding table. It's a lot cooler today. Uh, it's a really cool morning. It's probably only in the 60s, so We'll see how today goes. There are the two doves. I think they're waiting for me to put some food out. I wonder if they could see the bird feeder from where they are. They're really high up. This is the automatic feeder that used to be outside for the cats. Um, it was in the doghouse shelter and the cats used to eat out of it. But about a year ago, or almost a year ago, when Ditto came inside, I took the automatic feeder set up apart because I didn't need it anymore outside and it's been in the garage so I just dug it out of the garage and um, it needs to be cleaned up and refurbished and set up and I'm gonna probably have to move the doghouse structure from where it is now to somewhere around here so this is where I used to keep the automatic feeder set up but um, once I moved it out of here because I didn't need it anymore 
I moved the patio table and chairs over here and these work really really nice here um, so I kind of don't want to move these and this is where I have a feeding table for the cats um, because I do have this security camera pointing at it um, they could run to the back easily they could run uh, down the side of the yard easily so this seems to be working here also so I kind of feel like I'd want to put it somewhere around here um, I might end up moving all these flower pots maybe moving them over to a different part of the patio and putting the feeder next to the greenhouse um, I don't know how that would work or maybe I could just put the feeder here for now like next to the table and chairs um, that'd be kind of awkward though so I gotta figure this out um, today, hopefully, if not tomorrow, because I'm supposed to be going away um, tomorrow night, it's tentative right now, um, and then I'll be gone the following night also, so it's gonna be like a 48 hour trip. So that's why I figured, let me set up the automatic feeder again, because at least um, these outside cats would have some kind of dry food while I'm away. And that's what I did for Stella Boo and the kittens. Um, six Septembers ago yeah in 2016 that's why I got this automatic feeder and figured out the setup to begin with was because I was going away for weeks that time and I needed a way to make sure that they were fed while I was away so I had this set up and then grandma and grandpa came over I think like once or twice uh, to make sure that this was refilled and that there was uh, food around um, for the cats they they left piles and piles of dry food out for the cats and that worked out well and I'll never forget when I came back from that trip uh, the cats were all so much bigger than they were before I left and at that time we were feeding the cats the really cheap supermarket brand crunchies and that was like the last time I did that I was like yeah I'm not filling up these cats with corn wheat and soy because it definitely does not appear to be healthy for them so um, then we made a switch to better crunchies after that so yeah, I gotta look into setting this up. And this is the doghouse structure I'm talking about. So this used to be on the other side of the patio and this used to house the automatic feeder uh, and it protected it from the elements and uh, the cats could just, you know, enter in from here. The bowl would be like right here so they could just easily uh, eat from there. Obviously six cats cannot eat from it at the same time so they would have to eat in shifts. Um, but that's okay. Stella and the kittens used to all three of them eat at the same time. Although at the time, um, I did not have this doghouse shelter. This doghouse was the following year in 2017 when it was Boo and Hydrax on the patio. When I had um, Stella and the other cats, it was a more open shelter. It was kind of like a lean-to shed. Um, and then I got this on clearance and I was like, wow, this could work really well. And this worked well. I mean, it was in here for, it was in here for four years and it worked really well for four years. Another option for this would be to find the lid. I just searched the garage. I don't have the lid for this. Maybe if I went to Lowe's and uh, if they're still selling this tub, um, I could get a lid for it. And then I'd be able to strap a lid down on it. First, I have to put bricks inside to make it really heavy so the raccoons can't move it. Then I put the lid on, I'd have to strap the lid down, and then I could just slide this over to uh, this table and put this table in front of it so it blocks the uh, the bowl from rain. That might be, and act that actually might be a better option. And then put a heavy paver or two on top of it just to keep the raccoons from moving it. We get we have such big raccoons here, and they're. They're pretty strong, so they move stuff around and they'll like knock stuff over, so I definitely have to weight it down a lot. There's one brick there. I have to find the other bricks. They've been scattered around the yard, uh, but both of these sides just get loaded down with bricks. Also, I wanted to point out the way the bottom of this was cut. So in earlier versions, um, it wasn't cut as low to the bowl and the raccoons were able to stick their hands up into the feeder and try to get food off the conveyor belt. Um, so when I made this one, I made it as low as possible um, to still be able to get the the bowl through um, the plastic tub. And um, that definitely helped also. It's really tricky being able to get um, the bowl through or the hoop because the hoop is attached to the feeder, but it, it definitely worked. It's 9.30 a.m. and three of the cats have showed up so I guess they're not hungry. Maybe they already ate this morning. 
they pretty much just kind of sniffed around the plate, took a few bites and left. So this is what I have going on right now. I put bricks on both sides of this feeder. I could put a few more bricks, but for now, that's good. Um, I tested out the feeder. It is working. Um, there was actually still some dry food in it, so I dispensed wh what was in it into the bowl. I don't know if anyone's going to eat it, but the raccoons will probably eat it. Um, there's some dinner platter underneath the feeding table, um, the one with the, uh, the white bib and the white shoes. Maybe his name is Charlie, came by, he was looking around. And I put the feeding table here, so it's kind of um, protecting the bowl of crunchies. I need to get a cover, and I need to wait it down. Um, actually, I need to go get more crunchies inside and fill this up. Then I need to get a cover and put some kind of weight on it. So I might take a ride to uh, either Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, neither of them sell this tub anymore. Um, and yeah, there was nothing even remotely similar that had a cover. So I might see if I could just buy like a piece of wood that would fit and then I'll put some bricks on top of it and that could work. Actually, I just found this old whiteboard that I had in the garage. Instead of throwing it out, I put it in the garage, figuring maybe I could use it for something. And it fits really good, so I just put a paver on top of it. Um, it's like MDF, so it's not gonna last in the rain or anything. It's not gonna last a long time, but for now, for a temporary solution, uh, this should work. So maybe I don't have to run to the uh, Lowe's or Home Depot right now. It's 8 p.m. There are several cats wandering around. Some of them have eaten a little bit of the dry food that's in the bowl of the automatic feeder. And they ate all of the homemade raw food that was on the platter. So I just mixed up some more for them. I mixed in some water and then I put it on the platter. So that's what I did. Um, the one with the white paws is eating right now. And there's two others next to him. I don't know if you could see him because it's dark. Uh, I think one of them is Little Richard, and the other one might be Ringo. Oh no, there's um, there's a Torty. Oh, one of them is Ringo, and then one of them is a Torty. They're getting a little bit more brave, because obviously I'm standing out here and they're still on the patio. Um, the one with the white has been the most brave today. I don't know if his name is Charlie or his name is Peter. I don't know why, I just feel like maybe Peter Cottontail with the white paws, and I know Peter Cottontail didn't have white paws, he, probably, he had a white Cottontail tail. But I'm just not 100% sold on the name of this cat yet. And I'm gonna go inside because there's a lot of bugs out, I'm getting all bit up. It's 7, 10 a.m. This is what Boo looks like when he sees a cat outside. It's about 8 a.m. The automatic feeder outside dispensed food this morning. And there's little Richard. He's eating some of it. That plate is from last night. It got blown around. Um, so I looked at the security camera footage this morning, and it seems that some skunks really enjoyed the food that was in the automatic feeder last night. Um, possums came by, raccoons came by. Um, so there are, there's quite a bit of wildlife um, traveling through yesterday, which is good because the food that was in the bowl was the old food. I mean, it's been out in the feeder for like a year. So I was hoping that the wildlife would eat it. Um, and then yesterday evening, I refilled it with new food, um, which hopefully, is what the cat is eating now and i'm glad that the cats have figured out that there's food in there so that's what i was curious about are they going to figure out that there's food in that bowl and they can eat it so that way when i'm away for the next few days they're not going to be completely without food again i don't know who else is feeding them i don't know where they go they're they don't spend their entire day in my yard. They just kind of travel through. I see them occasionally. Um, so good to know the feeder's working again. And it's good to know that this setup worked also. Um, I saw like um, the skunks trying to get up into the feeder and even the raccoons. And uh, there seems to be enough weight to keep it keep it stable.
So I did ask Grandpa Farrell if he could build a new feeding table. This is what I call the feeding table. And um, I told him that I would like it to be um, three inches taller. These are 12 inch legs. I told him I'd like um, 15 inch legs and a three foot by three foot top. And if it's a little bit taller, it'll actually fit over the plastic tub that's holding the automatic feeder. Plus if it's bigger, um, it'll give more protection to cats that are eating under it. Also, I did not hear back from the rescue group that I contacted yesterday. So I emailed them in the morning and I've not received any emails back, no phone calls, nothing. So I'll see if anyone gets back to me today. And uh, if not, maybe I'll try calling them later in the day. But I've tried calling them several times and it just goes straight to like a voicemail. Plus, if I'm away for the next few days, there's nothing that I could really do here as far as even if they sent someone out and I had to tell them or show them, um, I wouldn't be able to do that. So maybe I'll just see what happens, see if they contact me over uh, the next several days and then um, deal with it again on Monday. It's 9.08 a.m. And this is Ringo and one of the torties. One of the torties was just on top of the table. That's why I grabbed the camera. So this automatic feeder outside is still on. I'm going to shut it off today um, because it's attracting a lot of raccoons. I was looking at the security camera footage from overnight. So many raccoons, skunks, possums, and just raccoon after raccoon. So um, I'm gonna shut it off because now that I'm back home, I'm just gonna put plates of food out for the little cats. And I definitely need to make some phone calls this week. I wanna call a few more vets or animal hospitals to see where I could uh, bring these for spay and neuter. I gotta figure out the logistics of that. So that's why I wanna shut off the automatic feeder because if the automatic feeder is off, then I'm more likely to be able to get a cat into a trap using food. So all the inside cats are acting normal this morning and they just had their breakfast. Boo is still eating his. He's, he likes to finish his breakfast in his room. Um, so, so far so good. Everyone seems to be back to normal. I honestly think the vomiting was from Boo because when I'm not here, he does get anxiety and, um, you know, he does overeat on crunchies. So today I have to empty out any remaining food in the feeders and then also um, clean them out and get them ready. Um, I like to get them all cleaned, washed and ready to go for the next time that I need to go away. That way I don't have to do anything then. I just, they're all set up and I just have to fill them. It's 9.30 a.m. I just looked outside and there's two cats playing with each other in the yard. And here comes the one with the white paws that's walking across the patio. They're having a good time so I'm not gonna go outside right now. The other day when I went outside, I noticed there's a hole in the ground. Can you see it's like that dark area? And I was like, I don't know what that is. So I was watering the um, plants. So I filled it with water and it filled up with water. So it's just like a hole. And it seems that the cats are playing with it. They're having a really good time today. They're running around. And then they're playing with that hole. So then I was like, I wonder if it's a rodent hole. But I did fill it with water and it, it, like it doesn't go down deep to like a nest or anything. It's only a few inches deep. I'm 
Maybe they enjoy having an unlimited supply of food out of that feeder. Right now it's going off three times a day. It's going off in the morning, in the middle of the day, and then before the sun goes down. And I have it set so that it dispenses a lot of food before the sun goes down because that's when these cats were eating. These cats were eating like around dusk, like just before sunset. So that's why I have it um, dispensing the most amount of food. But that's probably not the best thing to do now that they're used to it. I should probably have it dispense the most amount in the morning. That way, uh, by the end of the day, there's less food in it and less for the raccoons and skunks and possums to eat. Also, Grandpa Farrell made uh, a new feeding table that's a little bit bigger than this one. This one is around two feet by three feet, and the one that he made is three feet by three feet, so it's quite bigger. And um, it has, you know, higher legs, it'll be more stable, and I'm gonna put that outside. Right now it's in my car, I haven't been outside yet. I don't wanna freak the cats out, I'm just gonna let them enjoy their morning. I have um, a lot of other things I can be doing inside. But it's supposed to be a beautiful day today. It's supposed to be in the 80s. It's probably going to be the last day in the 80s for quite a while. So I want to be outside and really enjoy it. I hope that's not a rodent hole. Here's Boo. He's in his room. He's watching the cats outside. Look at this. I just came in the kitchen to get some cleaning supplies. And I saw this. I think this is the two torties. Um, what they're eating is leftover food. So all that food on that platter was left over in the three automatic feeders downstairs. So it's a bunch of the freeze-dried raw food. Um, that's those lighter nuggets are and then um, some of the crunchies. And they were perfectly good. They've just been in the feeder for like a day or two. So I figured I'm not gonna throw them out. I'll put them on a plate and I'll put them outside. The bowl of the automatic feeder is empty, uh, but I did shut it off, so it's not gonna be dispensing. And that's why I put this out here. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if that automatic feeder is empty it shouldn't be. I'm going to check on it later. So it's much easier to access the automatic feeder when it's set up like this because all I have to do is take the paver off the top and then the piece of wood and then it's right there. When it was in the doghouse shelter, I'd have to take the entire roof off. Then I would have to take the paver off. Then it was a piece of wood and then it was a piece of insulation and then I'd finally get to the feeder. So it was a lot more work. This, I just take off those two things and get straight to it. And it's been holding up really well, even with the raccoons trying to get into it. Um, I've been watching the security camera footage at night and yeah, they try everything they can to get into that, but it's been holding up really well. I also put fresh water in the two water bowls outside. So there's this one and then there's the big stainless steel one on the side of the house. That way they have fresh water the reason why I use such big water bowls is so that if debris gets in it or dirt or whatever, it'll dilute it more and whatever water is in it will be fresher than if it's a small bowl. I'm trying to figure out if both of these cats have the same face markings. I thought only one of them had that face marking like going down their face, but they both might. So I thought this one was Ziggy. See how it has the marking like down the middle of the face? It reminded me of Ziggy Stardust. But does this one have it also? Oh no, this one has, is a little bit different.
I need to figure out how to distinguish them from their markings other than their face. I think this is the first time in a very long time that I've seen the two of them together. They're obviously sisters. It's 12.30 p.m. Still is hanging out by the back door. And I looked out the window and the cat with like the white paws was outside and it was sneaking around the patio. And then I was like, oh, I wonder if its name is Sneakers because it has like the white shoes, which would be sneakers. And the way it sneaks around, like it was like seriously sneaking around. And um, I think it, it definitely saw Stella because it was looking at Stella. And then it was doing, you know, the thing the cats do where they get like really low and they walk really slow and carefully. It was basically sneaking around. So um, I'm, wonder if it, I'm wondering if that's its name. Maybe its name is Sneakers. It's 5.30 p.m. And let me show you what's going on here. So I noticed that the cats were looking for food in the bowl of the automatic feeder, which I shut off earlier. Um, so I put a plate of the homemade cat food down for them with some crunchies. And look at this. I'm on the patio and they're coming to eat. Right now I'm probably seven or eight feet away from them. So right now Little Richard's eating and then that's Ringo who just grabbed some food. We could see him a few feet away. And then in the back of the yard, wow guys, in the back of the yard, I don't know who that is. I don't know who this is because it's not the one with the boots. This is another one, is there seven? There's a total of seven? Oh my. Wow. That's not one of the torties, for sure. I got a look, I got a really good look at the other torty today. She's really pretty, she has a dark face and then she has like a lighter circle above her left eye. So I'm working on a name for her. Wow, I don't know who this one is that we're looking at right now. The one on the left is Richard and the one on the right is Ringo. Now, the other ones were just here, but I think they got scared when I came out. I'm going to put another platter of food together for them, and we'll see who comes out. They're eating really, really fast. Maybe they haven't been happy with just the crunchies out of the automatic feeder. But they're definitely less afraid of me even though they're probably just gonna eat the food and run. So this is the new table that Grandpa Farrell made. The legs are longer and the top is wider. It should actually fit over the automatic feeder uh, in that blue tub, which could be convenient. The goal is just to protect the bowl from rain. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, I'd probably have to remove that middle leg on that side. Because he put three legs on each side just for added stability in case some heavy raccoons jump on top of it. And um, I think they screw off, so I'll, I'll be able to get that off if I need to. Right now I just put it here to test it out and it, it's working really good. It's nice for the cats to have some extra headspace underneath it and it definitely gives them more space so if it was raining there's more room for them under there to to eat. I just came inside to get more food. There is about six cats in the yard right now. There's two eating. We could see two on the grass and I think there's another two in the back. I can't believe how many cats are around. None of them have tipped ears that I could see. I just came outside with some more food. So this is a can of Friskies with some water mixed in. The rest of the homemade food is still frozen. It's not fully defrosted yet. 
So there's three cats under the table and there's two in the back. So I just put it on a platter with some dry food. I'm putting it, I put it under the table with the other platter. And this is what's going on. There's five cats, one brand new one, but they all seem to be from the same litter. They're all the same size. They're all the same age. I don't know how many cats can be from one litter. This would make seven. All right, I'm gonna go inside. I'll let them come back and eat. So it's 5.48 p.m. and I hope they eat now because once it gets dark, then the raccoons are gonna be coming around. But I have to say I'm really shocked and surprised by how less fearful they are today. Maybe going away for 48 hours helped with that. Maybe having the automatic feeder on helped with that. Uh, I don't know. But they're not running away when I go outside. They're not running out of the yard. And I was only outside for a few minutes and I'm like all bitten up by bugs right now. So I don't know how these cats survive out there without getting a million bug bites. It looks like they like the homemade food better than the friskies because they're not even touching the plate with the friskies. It's 6.30 p.m. and both of the plates are almost empty. The plate that had the friskies still has some of the dry cat food on it. So I'm gonna see if I could put a little bit more food out if anyone else wants to eat more. There are still some cats in the yard. So, we'll see. It is 7.52 a.m. and this is what happened last night. So um, I heard some weird noises outside last night and I heard some raccoons chattering and at one point I thought I hope they didn't break into the feeder and look what happened they broke into the feeder. So let's assess the damages. So they were able to move this heavy paver 
they didn't pull it off they just slid it over and they were able to lift this piece of wood up not only that but look at this they were able to get the top off of this unit and I don't even know what that plastic piece is see this plastic piece I don't even know what it is so this plastic piece is this mechanism on here that you press to open this so I gotta figure out how to fix this if it can be fixed so I snapped it back in it goes like this however they did break a piece off on the back there's a broken piece on the back and they got into the food there's a bunch of food there they didn't need all of it though so another thing they've been doing is taking these binder clips off the bowl so I have the bowl attached with these binder clips and this is the second time that I found some binder clips taken off so I just put a paver directly on top of the feeder and then I'm gonna put the wood on top of this and I'll put another paver here's Richard do you see him he's been watching me and I came over here to grab another paver and he was gonna run away but then I was like hey Richard and he he just stood there I don't want to scare him you want some food are you hungry are you hungry I'll give you some food Richard okay I'm getting so close guys I'm so close I'm probably six feet away hey Richard Hey Richard, you hungry? Want some food? His tail's still there. He's not going anywhere. Come here. So here's what's going on now. I replaced the wood with this piece of plywood. This is a two foot by two foot piece of plywood. It's gonna hang over the, the bowl, so it's gonna protect it a little bit from some rain. And I put two pavers on top, so it'll be heavier. So there's the two pavers on top and the paver on top of the actual feeder itself. So hopefully that'll keep everything in place. I'm going to keep that feeder off because I'm going to feed the cats just food on plates since I'm home. And um, yeah, so that's what's going on today. So I did not take the middle leg here off the table. I just butted the table up against the wood and there's a little bit of an overlap. So... I think for now that's good. So there's quite a large area underneath the table where the cats can eat and stay dry. And we'll see how this goes. We're supposed to get some rain this afternoon. Not a heavy storm or anything, but we'll see how it goes. And there's Richard. He's just hanging out. Hey Richard, you want some food? Little Richard. Hey little Richard. It's 8 a.m. I'm putting some food together and look at this Look, it's little Richard by the back door with Boo. Boo's not happy Boo's very not happy What a brave cat Richard is But he's no fool he knows Boo's not happy if that glass was not there Boo would be in a fight right now You're okay, Richard. You're okay. The door's shut. Look at that. One of the torties was just on top of the feeder checking out the new pavers. I don't know which one it was. So I have a plate of food here. It's some of the homemade cat food, the cooked cat food, which the cats like. And some um, dry cat food, some crunchies. I'm looking at the cats right now, so I'm a little distracted. So there's Richard, and today I feel like this cat's name is Goldie because it almost has like a gold coin on its head. It would be kind of a strange name for a cat that's so dark, but I don't know. Then it would be Ziggy and Goldie. We'll see. We'll see what happens if that sticks or if it doesn't feel right. See the, like the, it's like a gold marking on the head. I'm zoomed in as far as I could go. Is that missing fur? Is that lighter colored fur or is that actually missing fur? I can't really tell on this camera screen. So while I was standing here filming the other cat, Richard came to eat. 
He's like four feet away from me. This is the closest I've been to any of these cats yet. I don't want to freak him out or scare him or anything. So I'm just going to let him eat. I'm going to go inside. The other cat will probably come, come by. So this table is a much better size for multiple cats versus the other table. The other table is really only for like one or two cats. Oh, look at this. Look, I backed up about three feet. Hey, Goldie. So that's as zoomed in as I could go. Do you see what's going on outside? I don't know what's going on, but Sneakers is sneaking around again. He's like all hunched down, sneaking around. I don't know if his name is Sneakers or Clyde, because I was thinking about Sneakers. Oh, he just went off running somewhere. So I was thinking about Sneakers, and then I was thinking of different brands of Sneakers, and I was like, well, Puma are my favorite brand of Sneakers. I was like, maybe I could call him Puma. But I just feel like that's not his name. So then I was like, well, what are some of the names of the different Puma sneakers? And one of their most famous styles is called Clyde. So then I was like, oh, I wonder if the cat's name is Clyde. So I'm still trying on names. It's 4.30 p.m. and we're supposed to get rain soon. So I put a plate of food out under the feeding table. And when I did that, Ziggy was out in the back corner. And there she is now. You see her? So as soon as I came inside, she ran over to the plate to eat, but then I think she got bit by a bug or something. The next thing I knew, she was running back toward the grass and um, she was like swatting at stuff. So there's a lot of bugs out um, lately. Now she's walking around to the back of the yard. And um, so the food's there. Um, if anyone wants to eat it before it starts raining, um, I've been making phone calls today with regards to getting these cats spayed and neutered and it's way more complicated than it should be. It is like absolutely ridiculous. I've been leaving messages, waiting for callbacks, which I have not been getting, and contacting various services and companies. And it's ridiculous that there's not a quick and easy way to go about having some feral cats spayed and neutered. I could put a trap out tomorrow, potentially trap one of them, but then I would have nowhere to bring them as far as spay and neuter because none of the local practices that I talk to will do something like that. One of the vets that I talked to today was like, well, you know, it'll cost between 500 and 600 dollars for a spay and neuter um, if you're not going to go through one of the discount programs. And then she was like naming off all these different programs and then I look into the programs and all the information is completely out of date and they're like recommending people to contact vets that I know have been out of business for years. For example, the vet that I took Stella Splash and Simba to back in 2016, 2017, they're completely out of business but they're still showing up on all these referral lists. So I don't know, it's just a, it's just a big mess. It's horrible. So there's Goldie, she came over to eat. I don't know if that name is gonna stick to her, but I'm calling her that right now because she kind of reminds me of like a gold coin on her forehead. It's 5.05 .05 p.m. right now, and I went outside to close up the greenhouse a few minutes ago, and it was perfect timing because right now the wind is really starting to pick up, and um, yeah, it looks like maybe there's a storm coming. I'm actually going to go outside. I'm going to see if I could go outside and move some of this stuff off the table because I don't want it blowing around. Um, I don't know if it's heavy enough to not blow around. And um, maybe I'll put some more stuff in the garage just to keep it from blowing. I just put a bunch of stuff away and I tied up the umbrella. Hopefully that won't fly anywhere. And the plate of food blew, uh, blew over, so I put it under one of the legs. Hopefully that should hold. The other feeding table's been out in all kinds of crazy weather. So um, yeah, hopefully this will just pass quickly. 
It's 6 p.m. There were four cats outside, so I put a new plate of food together for them. The other one is pretty wet from the rain. And there's Richard. So he was out there with some of the others who all ran away, and then he only ran like halfway back onto the grass. And then he just kind of sat there. He actually blinked at me a few times, and then he came back once I came inside. And there's one of the torties back there. It's 7 p.m. Splashes by the back door. And there's Richard. Do you see him? There's Splash. And there's Richard. He's the bravest of the bunch. He's the smallest, and he's the bravest. He's really interested in any of the cats that are inside this door. At least I think that's Richard. Here comes Boo. There's Boo. Boo's not happy. Boo sees the cat. Yeah, it's Richard. Be nice, everybody. Be nice. He's chasing a bug around the patio. I think tabby cats must be hunters. Simba love chasing bugs. Let's see what happens if I go outside. Hey. Hey. How are you? So there's still dry food on the platters. Look who it is, it's Ziggy. Hey Ziggy. Hello Ziggy. How are you? Where's your friend Richard? Or your brother? Where's your brother Richard? Where is he at? If I walk that way, she's gonna get scared and run, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go back inside. It's noticeably cooler out right now. It was pretty hot and humid today, and it's gotten really cool. I wonder what would happen if I went and sat in the greenhouse. So I'm in the greenhouse right now. I just opened the window because there's a fly in here. This greenhouse is made out of pretty thin plastic. So there's not much insulation against sound or um, like temperature. What I'll do once the weather starts getting colder is I'll actually wrap this entire greenhouse in clear plastic. And that helps to insulate it a little bit, but for uh, the summer season um, it's not wrapped at all and uh, on really hot days it got up to over a hundred in here and that's with the door open the window open and uh, there's a little fan in here too so there's Richard he's on the other side of the patio I'm in the greenhouse he's on the patio he's getting more and more comfortable in the patio with me Hey Richard, you look pretty. Okay, you got scared. I'm getting bit up by bugs. It's 7, 10 p.m. I just went outside and put some more raw food on the platter. And then look at this, like, it looks like either three or four cats. I don't know where they came from. They must have came from the back of the yard. I don't know who's eating. I need to fix the, um, the cameras facing the wrong direction out there. It's 7.15 and I just went outside. I gave them the rest of the homemade raw food that I had defrosted for them and a few more handfuls of dry food. And there's five of them outside right now. Oh, and I forgot to move the camera again. I forgot to move the camera because when I was putting the food out, um, the one with the white paws, like Charlie or Clyde or Chuck, I haven't figured out his name yet, he like came over to the plates. And I was so like shocked that he wasn't running away. So, um, yeah, I'll give them some time and then I'll 
go back out and move that camera. Guys, there's a fox on the patio right now. I don't know where it went, I just checked the security camera. There's a possum on the other side of the patio. Here's a cat. And there was a fox, like literally a minute ago. I don't know where it went. I hope the cats stay safe. So this would be the second time I saw the fox here. I don't know if you could see it, but the um, the possum is near the patio furniture. So first we heard like a noise, like something was moving around and I thought it was, um, I thought it was raccoons trying to get into the automatic feeder again. Look at this, this cat's just sitting here. Here's another cat. And there goes a possum in between them. I don't know where the fox went. You guys okay out there? Boo's at the window with me. You guys okay? There it is. I think he was eating some of the, um, he was eating some of the food on the, there's a little bit of food left on the platters. I wish the cats would go away. I hope cats can outrun a fox. You guys see the fox? Get away. They're just looking at me. The other one's just hanging out. I don't want to scare the fox and cause something weird to happen. But I... I I don't know where it came in. Oh, there's the possum. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh my god. <gasps> I hope the possum's okay. I hope they're not gonna fight over food. So the cat moved over, and the po the cat moved over. There's the fox. Come on, cat. Come on, cat. Go away, cat. I don't know if the fox is afraid of the cat or what. It's a little fox. I wonder if it's the same one that was here uh, like a few weeks ago. I don't know anything about fox behavior. This is the first year I've seen them in my yard on my patio. I've never seen them before around here at all. For as long as I've lived here, I've never seen a fox. And now this is twice within a few weeks. I can't believe the cat is just sitting there. Just looking at it. I don't know which cat that is either. Okay. So someone made a noise and the fox ran off. I don't know where it ran. So it ran off to like the side of the house. Oh, that's, is that Ziggy or is that Goldie? Oh, that's Goldie. That's Goldie sitting there. These cats are so brave. So the fox is back. And it's poking around near the feeder and the platters. This is why I don't want to leave food out at night. I'd rather get the cats fed earlier. So it's just trying to eat whatever's left on the platters. It's a really skinny fox. I've never seen foxes this skinny before.
you for watching this Lucky Farrell's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.